Hello and welcome to the Stream of Chaos. My name is Dave and I will be your Keeper of Arcane Lore for this session of Call of Cthulhu. Uh, today we are continuing our playthrough of Regency Cthulhu and you can get your own copy of this book over at chaosium.com. You can also find all of our collected VODs over on the Chaosium YouTube channel and if you're watching there you can catch us live each Friday over on Twitch. I believe Daylight Savings is happening again very soon. I think we changed this week or something so Stay tuned uh, I think for we're more. Good for another week. Next week will be at the same time. And Who then knows? after that, our clocks will move forward. So yeah. we'll be an hour. Yeah. And it just doesn't bear thinking know. about. It just yes. doesn't bear. <laughs> 10 a.m. Melbourne time, as That's always. Right. On a Currently, Saturday. we are at 4 p.m. PST. When we do a wiggle, we will become 3 p.m. PST. When we wiggle in the other direction, and North America wiggles in the other direction, it moves by two hours, but don't worry about that. That's not a and thing. And to be clear, it we was... do it to be difficult. We try to kind of shake a few people loose every now and then, just, it's you know, see who, see who can keep up with where we're tuning in. So, well, uh, yeah, kids, you know, Alex's home get state has it right. Yeah. Alex's home state has it right. Queensland just said, not for us. Yeah, that's right. It's a, I mean, it's a system. also, a third of the country is like, nah, we're good as well. God bless them. Um, I'll give a, uh, I want to give a thank you to Roll20 and Sirenscape for being tools which used to improve our game. And without further ado, we'll return to the scenario at hand. Uh, the, our four investigators have gathered over at the, uh, Stornley house, which is, uh, a, you know, one of the estates around Tarryford, uh, to meet with Nathaniel Havering and his wife, Susanna Havering. Uh, Nathaniel having fallen into this endless slumber that has beset the town uh, and uh, refusing to wake. Uh, some of our investigators discovered a strange symbol which seems to almost draw them into an alternate or different world, it's unclear. Uh, and they have now gathered outside the house preparing to continue their adventures. We'll pick up right where we left off with uh, lunch or uh, dinner coming soon and everyone deciding <laughs> what they want to do and where they want to go. Uh, and so we'll do a little hurl around the table and reintroduce our investigators. Why don't we begin with... Uh, Let's begin with Art. Oh my goodness, this never happens. Um, hi, face. I'm Art. <laughs> A new and exciting order. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Art. Uh, I'm playing the... I don't even know how to describe this man anymore. <laughs> I'm playing um, the Reverend Samuel Jennings. Uh, you Previous sad boy, now like sad angry um, maybe? What? Like... Say the one again to my face. I said rad boy. I was thinking maybe you have like a backwards hat. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I thought it was mad, mad. It seemed to be mad boy. Mad boy is better. <laughs> yeah. Mad. Uh, you just said rad boy and I was like, wait, am I in, am I in Fallout now? This is weird. <laughs> Wrong universe. Um, yeah. Uh, Driver and Samuel Jennings. Uh, not a particularly fighty man, but definitely a man of God. Which one? Who knows at this point? Uh, probably still the Christian one, but the cards on the table could change. Yeah. Um, and uh, has has just had a, a nice conversation with a, a Miss Jane Radcliffe, a, a sort of politely going, <laughs> <I'm on> Oi, <laughs> uh, you ain't all that. So what's up? Yeah. Um, um, speaking but of you know, what's in up. In all the Regency terms. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of what's up, let's go to Jackson. Hey, that's me. I'm Jackson. I might be about to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I won't. Yeah. Yeah. Call of Cthulhu is all about building suspense. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm, it's funny to mention that we, we do get raided on Twitch. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> so this is a perfect introduction. Yeah. This is, this is us, us welcome. Now. The thing this about is... sneezes is that they're not always as they seem, just like my character, because I'm playing uh, allegedly Miss Jane Radcliffe, who is actually Miss Molly Rollins, who is here for up to no good. Uh, she was sneaking around the uh, Potterton estate last session, finding um, where the valuables might be kept, and instead found a, a clue that is directly related to the investigation, which she would very much like to share with her colleagues, her fellow investigators, to help solve the mystery and save the lives, but it would raise some questions about what she was doing, sneaking around looking at for valuables. So it won't be uh, swept under the rug, but just uh, just like shuffled into a corner. Yeah. 
Gorgeous. Well, speaking of shuffled into a corner, let's go across to Jim. Yeah, I, I've literally been shuffled into a corner of my room, moving a couple of centimeters to the right, but uh, never mind. I am George Potterton. I, I wasn't so much shuffled into a corner as left in town without a way home, and I had to walk all the way back uh, last night so that Jane could rob my home. But I don't know about that, and I think she's just wonderful. Uh, George Potterton is a, a the most eligible bachelor in all of Tarryford, uh, an absolute fool and an aspiring uh, mythos investigator, which means he has a life expectancy that's best measured using a single year's calendar, and that probably makes him all the better bachelor, frankly, because you'll inherit faster. Oh yeah, well, and speaking of a quick inheritance, let's go across to Alex. <sighs> I'm Alex. I'm playing the uh, only Wentworth sister after my beloved elder sister went up in smoke, became paste, all sorts of terrible things. That was a bit too soon, Dave. Oh, yeah, was I it? Don't... Taste. Okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, yeah, too soon, too soon. Uh, but young Miss Emma Wentworth uh, is is doing her best while her parents are away, recovering from the horror of losing a daughter. And in the meantime, I've, I've picked up a penchant for a shotgun, and I think the idea at this point is vengeance. Hell yeah. Oh, that's a classic for a reason. Oh, oh, and the Reverend and I are engaged. Oh, yes. We keep forgetting that bit. Yep. Engaged in your of revenge. And the more <laughs> traditional. Fantastic. Uh, so, Convenience. Uh, Convenience. <laughs> yeah, the traditional reason. Uh, our cast is gathered uh, outside Storm house not too far from the town of Terryford. you have ample supply of carriages and things and you are also joined by dr parson who was here investigating uh nathaniel havering's slumber and finding that he was more resting deeply he hasn't had night in a little while um and didn't seem to react to mr potterton's light attempt to lead him to some mystical pond in dreaming woods uh, his intent will be to go back into town where he wants to meet with some of the other people who are slumbering and basically continue his work he is ex completely exhausted but kind of powering forward and uh has you know basically if, if not uh requested for conversation will depart uh, imminently uh i'll pass across to the four of you immediately to decide what you want to go where you want to go what you want to do and i guess how the party may want to split or remain together um yeah I, I believe I, Potterton I, and I were up front. Yeah, I think I think we've probably been discussing over the last like little bit while the others were talking about you know the serious occult aspects of things or each other's secret identities. Uh, well, only one secret identity, you well, know what I mean? We are but, um, lack thereof. Lack thereof. <laughs> hey, it's still it's still it's still playing with the topic even if you don't have a connect. Anyway, um, I, I like to think we've been going through armories basically. You've got a shotgun. Mm -hmm. uh, we've like tracked down every horse that we have available, gone through all of the gear that I purchased at great expense, you belonging to the former Captain Stone, uh, and and we've sort of like laid out our little armory. Um, mm. Do we do we want to? just sort of set a, a, a an approach plan if suddenly something goes wrong if we do end up in a situation where we're, we're, we're pulled into a battle do we have like a standing organization or something uh, i mean i just i just have my shotgun i i don't i haven't really okay well i'll get in front of things i'll go up close you stay far away that that seems sensible sure i i i oh dear george these things don't really follow the laws of nature in a way that is, um... I don't know how well a formation will work. I... I understand that, but... I, in, a, I suppose... in a place where, where space and time and all of that is a little bit... Uh, malleable. Maybe all it will achieve is buy enough time for the Reverend to figure out something, but that might be all we need. Of course, George. You can go up close, and I'll stay behind. Yes, good, good. I'm, I'm, I'm completely calm now, certain that my approach is in fact going to work. That's um, all he wanted. Exactly. Give some credit yeah. to the man who inspired him, Captain Stone. Worked pretty well for him. Just stabbed yeah, a lot with a three, sword. Three dead monsters. Yeah. Actually, so I mean, one thing to to speak about. Yeah, you have access to some uh, bits and pieces of weaponry. Uh, per the period. A lot of weapons take quite some time to reload. Basically, it's four rounds. You take a shot and then you spend a 
a half an age jamming bits of flint down it and wadding paper and things like that. So a couple of surplus pistols might not go amiss. Like, George, you could begin to arrange like a full bandolier of, you know, pirate pistols under a heavy coat. That would probably be something you will need to... You probably don't have ready to go. So if you have a spare evening, that might be something you start to put together. Um, A little go Uh, bag. Totally makes sense. I think I yes I, I I think I am though just I, I think we sort of noted it. I will be I'm, I'm carrying the good sword now yeah. because I am a little worried that we're going to be leapt upon. But I okay. will I will probably spend some time trying to prepare the black powder weapon. That's I am going to probably ask you to you will need to specify. We're not going to default assume you have it because that would be quite a statement bringing into town and things. This is very much an etiquette thing. You can have it stowed in the carriage by default. Sure. Mm. If you take it into any like if you go into the tavern say. You're not going to have it on you. I'm assuming you guys are all collectively unarmed unless you specify otherwise. Or if you want to secret a knife on your person, you can probably get away with that now. And then we might do sleight of hand rolls if it comes up. I think I've had a knife the whole time. (laughs) Okay. All right. I I think that tracks. Um, Well, then it hasn't had a chance to be investigated. I'm happy for anyone to say I have like a small weapon secret about. If you get into a uh, situation where it could be discovered, we'll make sleight of hand or stuff. Yeah, I think I think I'll, I've, I've done some sword training stat wise. I'm, can I have my parrying dagger or something like that against my? He didn't, uh, but it's hidden. You yeah, are yes, sneaking yes. it. So if you go into somewhere yes. and it gets found, it is a little bit uncouth. Okay, noted. Understood. Awesome. Is that what and a then, stiletto is? Yeah, that sounds about right. Stiletto for for parrying? Just yeah, like it's like man, a, just like a, a man, super man thin. Thin. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, little, and little then man. Jim, do you want to say that your like saber and any other weaponry is stored in the carriage? Yep, makes anybody? sense to me. Okay, awesome. All right. Perfect. Uh, uh, what is the plan for the rest of the day? Uh, well, yeah, heading to the tavern first. We try and figure out the rem- remnants of what's happening there, and then from there we can go up and try and speak to any of the other people who are still sick. I think is the idea. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I've shared my theory with the Reverend that maybe somewhere near every everywhere someone's been sick, we'll find one of these symbols. Mm. So if if we're heading to the tavern, uh, I don't want to go to the tavern. Heck. You really don't want to go to the tavern. No, it'll be fine. Will it be fine? Ooh. <laughs> Dave, how have my interactions with the tavern been? Like, I've had to get to the tavern yes. every now and then, if you haven't seen the first episode, um, to uh, rendezvous with my brother, yep. who is uh, up to no good, Arthur. Yeah. Um, I think I've been meeting him at the back. Have I? I I, I haven't been seen inside. You have. You've. You've. I. uh, I think you may have early on. I. Yes, you have at one point probably met him inside and had a more casual one. And then since then, so as not Mm. to alert suspicion or draw a connection, you have not done. You have not repeated. Probably your first meeting with him was like inside. You saw his room, so you've got a sense of the layout. Um, you just would have been like in in, in. would have been out of disguise. Yes, you know, yes, yeah. yes. You so have not done it in your full... Back in disguise. You, you're probably pretty good. Here's the thing. Normally, you would assume that you would rock up and your brother wouldn't want to blow your cover, for lack of a better word, and, like, get in the of way. Especially if you're with you, he's on edge. You've delayed this long enough. You were out of contact for several days. You you possibly, mm. he would see this one. He might push things. You probably are a little concerned that he might mess with you. Yeah. Um, you what would just need to be s- careful. So how long do I have? Is it tomorrow or the day after? It's tomorrow, uh, he said wasn't it? three days. No. It's probably tomorrow. Yeah. Oh no! If he said three days, how long has it been? I don't know. This would have been yesterday morning. So yeah, sorry, it's the day after tomorrow. Day after tomorrow. Great. Uh, getting close. Dare I risk coming in? I do want to see if I can spot this symbol because I really like my theory. He also is not always I... there. He sometimes goes and rendezvous with others. He goes and stays in his room. He might not be there when you are. I think it's worth it. That's right. Well, yeah, I mean, if he's planning to uh, to, to make a play, then he's going he's gonna to need to get, get out of town and go back to, you know, the woods where the blistered heels uh, are camping out. Yeah. Yep. So I'll risk it. Okay. All this, all this going along. plays internally in Miss Radcliffe's mind. That's right. Okay. Yep. So is the plan yeah, to head into? Receipt. All of you are heading into Tarryville. Believe that it was the um, Miss Wentworth was the one who was sending uh, staff yeah. over to assist with the 
repairs so it yeah i'm sense. just a gen general handyman if, if she needs that and yep. just yeah helping her find genuinely trying to find some stuff for her but also i would like to get inside that cellar yeah. so the, yeah on the basis of the reverend and miss wentworth like both one providing like a direct line of charity and the reverend being like someone who you would expect to be around when charity is is being delivered and or discussed um we have a, a valid reason to wander in yeah, yeah. and uh <clears throat> we're being upstanding I... citizens helping out mm -hmm. just a helpful sort okay grand uh the four of you divide yourself between the two appropriate carriages and depart from uh stornley house and heading back into tarry by the time you arrive, it's getting towards lunchtime. And similar to when you uh, arrived the previous time, this is probably when it's about busiest. A lot of the folks from the nearby fields are coming into town for food and things, so the tavern will probably be at its most occupied. Uh, folks are coming and going. The town is, is bustling and lively. Uh, Dr. Parsons returns to his surgery to deposit some notes and then promises to go and check in on some other sleeping uh, people. Should he be need to be called upon, you can uh, speak with his wife, Abigail Parsons, and leave a message, and he's sure it will, he will get to it in time. Um, he urges you once again to basically continue this investigation. Uh, Nathaniel Havering not waking is unsurprising, but concerning. Uh, he's also a little worried that more people may have fallen uh, sick, but hasn't heard anything yet. He's going to go and getting into that. The four of you, however, uh, arrive in the very centre of Tarryford, where the Four Feathers Tavern sits right at the crossroads of it all, and a number of other horses and things are uh, uh, sort of tied up nearby. You can leave your carriage, and you can also meet with a uh, local labourer. It would be a carpenter of some sort, uh, who has arrived per Miss Wentworth's instructions to assist with the repairs. Uh, Alex, do you, have a, do you have a name for hands for this, this gentleman? Um, Tom. Tom, perfect. Uh, Tom has worked with you before for some like light modifications around your place. You know him to be serviceable, capable, and relatively cheap. Uh, he doesn't ask too many questions as long as he's paid on time. Tom's waiting nearby with his uh, tools set to the side, uh, greets you with a uh, nod and uh, a more formal bow to Mr. Potter, he's not met previously, and will be on hand to assist with repairs as necessary. Uh, the tavern awaits. Uh, before you enter, Miss Radcliffe, I'll ask you to make a luck roll. <laughs> Heck. Okay. Um, as you go, as as uh, you all head towards the door. Oh, uh, oh, Don, he's not here. I really wanted to see him. Uh, <laughs> nice try. Uh, as yeah. you as you as you head towards the door and you open it, uh, Miss Radcliffe, you're like immediately the hairs on the back of your neck will raise as you see over in the corner, uh, your uh, brother Arthur seated and Reverend and uh, Miss Potterton. You were, actually all three of you have previously identified this man as well as a threatening individual um is leering in the back he is not however alone this time there are two other men sitting with him in like heavily worn coats broken apart uh shoes uh all nursing sort of drinks and some uh victuals spread across the table uh and speaking in uh, conspiratorial whispers uh as you come inside they won't r notice you immediately as they are involved in in uh their conversation but lingering here will surely draw attention as they are occasionally scanning the room and uh, miss radcliffe if you wish you can immediately attempt a stealth or something similar to try and you can also you can just step back outside or you can try to just slide uh through to another area up the stairs wherever you wish yeah i mean can i can i argue acting if i'm so in character they would just like look up and see a bunch of you know aristos and not uh Give him a give a second glance. Well, here's the thing: Aristos in this area are non-standard, and that's also kind of their bread and butter for targets. It will still that's keep true. their attention, unfortunately. Now you're acting to just blend in, just they don't recognize me. You uh, that would again, then in that case, that would probably tip the others as you suddenly kind of change your persona. This is a little bit you are a bit you are caught between a rock and a hard place here, as you've kind of got two identities coming to center. Okay, well, is, is stealth, like, like disappearing? Like, that's going to arouse suspicion of my comrades here. But you can, yeah, you could just head... That'd be like, you kind of, yeah, vanishing in the crowd and heading straight upstairs. I tell you what, give me I an act... What? 
I'm gonna do it. No, I, yeah. oh no, you go ahead. You go ahead. I, I would say acting, and that what will just say? kind of that will be you just kind of trying to position yourself, stay away from them, keep your back to them as much as possible, and at yeah. least if you if you draw attention, you'll be in a clear crowd. Uh, so Miss Radcliffe's gonna work on this. Uh, for everyone else, I'll ask what your intentions are. The owner, uh, Mrs. Alice Copeland, is uh, moving drinks back and forth and still continuing to step across that wide hole in the cellar. Uh, you also know that she's opened her accounts books to you uh, and allowed you to study them, although uh, a thumble from Mr. Potter to failure from the Reverend, uh, you'll need to spend a bit more time to try and draw any information from them. Well, I, I think that I'm pretty happy to go to the accounts books and have another crack at it in the context of we're working together now, we're properly sitting down, we've smoothed things over uh, because of the last failure that we had and, you know, managed to salvage the reputational damage. Um, but if you would like to take a look at the basement instead, uh, I'm pretty happy to, you know, have a shot at something else to, to try and figure out something. Um, I'm genuinely happy to lend my support to either venture uh i can go to the accounts if uh or i can i can be on standby for helping to persuade or cajole or whatever the in, as far as carpentry is concerned so I, I can if i can find an excuse i quite like to get to the cellar because to look for this uh the symbol which seems to be carved in stone stone is probably where you'll Perhaps. So that's probably where you'll find the most stone. I think well, we to set you up with an excuse then, I'd probably say something like, oh, well, you know, it would be good to have at least two people in the cellar, but uh, and then you can leap in and if, if we do want to split do it. those lines. Yes. All right. Okay. So yes. the divisions are going to be Reverend Jennings and Mr. Potter to sitting down in and probably the back area once again with uh, Mrs. Copeland's accounts books while Miss Radcliffe and Miss Wentworth uh, uh, walk with Tom towards the open hatch and uh, descend down to investigate the to-dos in the cellar. Before this is done, uh, I will note that Miss Radcliffe, although you are sort of maintaining your facade positioning and the attention drawn from your companions, is once again the people inside the tavern also remark at the attendance of Mr. Potterton, one of uh, Tarryford's most eligible bachelors, uh, and people looking yeah. over and muscling. At one point, you will see one of the men sitting with Arthur elbow him. They both look up and, uh, for a moment, the unavoidable eyes catch and both of you see one another, and uh, he very slowly tracks his eyes across your party, connecting the four of you together, and then settling on Mr. Potterton, who kind of, I imagine, Jim, like, kind of just unaware of the danger a yeah, little bit. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, ignorance is bliss. Yeah, uh, is is just now walking over to speak with uh, Alice, and he very much, like, stares into George's back as he and the Reverend walk back into the uh, side room. Okay. Um, uh, we'll follow uh, Miss Radcliffe and Miss Wentworth as well as Tom first, as uh, yours is possibly the quicker, because you, you guys are going to need a little bit of time to go through everything. Um, as uh, the three of uh, the two of you and, and Tom head down into the cellar, you'll be escorted by uh, one of the serving staff uh, who uh, head towards the edge, uh, gesture down, and, and she says that the hatch that previously had been taken off by Garrick is still stowed down there and simply returning that should be enough to stop them needing to make such a wide berth around it. That said, be careful as there was some work being done by Garrick before he uh, fell into his slumber and it's still left unfinished. Uh, Tom Ooh. assures them it'll be no trouble. Uh, he has all the tools to hand and he can easily reinstall it. You can have a look as well at the remaining work and quote for what might be needed. What, what, what was the work being done? Um, the serving staff says, I, I'm not sure. I, I think he was re re reorganizing how the wine barrels were stored or something, looking to expand space. And it, it's a small place. It's existed for centuries. I think he was trying to make some more use of the room. Very good. Can't wait to have a folk around. All right. Uh, you head down the stairs uh, one at a time and quickly arrive in a small, very cramped cellar. Um, it's low, but you can stand. Uh, it'd be about, like, right brushing at the top of your head. There are a number of, uh, like, cages, basically, crafted from wood, which store huge, heavy, uh, tankards filled with ale. And then towards the right, there's a, like, I want to say antique, but it's probably actually just period appropriate. Uh, there's a, like, tall shelf, 
uh, quite nicely made uh, with a bunch of inserts for wine bottles to be stowed in. There's also a couple of sacks of grain and things like that off towards the side storage for victuals and, and food that can like access that can then be run up to the kitchen uh, it looks as though they're not using this space as much as previously uh because they it's kind of less accessible at the moment or in the way so they're just storing things in the kitchen itself um but in normal use this would be where they keep the bulk of supplies uh one thing is clear uh the sorry a couple of things clear the door, the hatch, is laid towards the side nearby, and Tom immediately crouches down to have a look at it and see what needs to be reinstalled. Basically, it's like the hinge was taken out. It just needs to be reasserted. Mm. He's like, this is like a two-minute job. I'll just get started on it now. Um, uh, another is there is the signs of Garrick's work, where he was taking apart one of the racks, which had broken, one of the ones that stores the kegs, and he was hammering it back into place. He is clearly not a great craftsman. It was kind of... <laughs> ad hoc work as he just had a bit of a go but there's evidence all throughout the establishment of that it was kind of just save a bit of money do it yourself that kind of uh, idea um the other thing of note though is that towards the side there is uh this would be not sure which cardinal direction but off towards the left when you come down the cellar there is a like brick wall up against it and it's low it only comes up to about halfway up your uh your uh like chest and on the other side of it there is an extension of the space that seems to be unused there's and then there's like then another plaster wall past that it looks as though it was bricked up at some point and never quite completed uh the mortar is flaky dry peeling apart and there's another one of the barrels sort of like just pressed up against it which has been tapped it's like lent up against a stool so that uh drinks can be poured from it um there's no immediate sign of a symbol scratch like into the surface or anything, but uh, I'll pass it to the two of you to look around. Yeah, just do a big old case of the joint, okay. as we say in the trade. I'm um, definitely going to straight away go over to that wall and look over that because it seems the weird to break up happening. half your cellar. Yeah, yeah, wherever the activity is happening, looking for uh, any signs of carving or work or huh. um, like good stuff. And I ask for a spot hidden roll from each of you. Um, mm. Other ones of note would be something like history or archaeology appraise would get a more of a sense of the like the the space as it went backward. Time. Yeah, no. Spot hidden is my best shot. Hey, hard okay. success. Um, uh, what you'll both notice just by uh, looking around is, uh, yeah, there's this, like, extended area that seems to be completely unused. Nothing is stored on the other side of it, and it's about four or five feet deep. It seems strange to have bricked up a portion of it when they are so short on space. Like, this mm. other side, the main area, is very heavily used, and this one, which was beginning to be sort of pulled apart, is um, unoccupied by things except for the one barrel. Uh, on the other side of it, uh, Miss Wentworth, you immediately uh, sort of walk across and your feet step in something kind of sticky. And as you fetch and raise a lantern to look down at it, there is like a oil thick sheen run Ooh. along the ground uh, that seems to be coming from the, uh, the wall on the far side as if it's leaking through uh, the pavement or the, uh, the ground. Uh, the barrel, which is being tapped and drawn from, see so just on top of it, has a bit of this sort of like stain along the side of it, uh, is where it's clearly come into contact and then been raised up onto this stool. Uh, Miss Radcliffe, following that track and with a successful spot hidden, uh, you will see that there is a on the plasterwork on the far side as you raise your own torch and begin to inspect it. You can see very very faint traces where this plaster and then tapping it brickwork behind it possibly blocked up a doorway or something similar on the other side maybe just a hole in the wall that was prepared uh you don't have a keen sense of history but this happened a long time ago this wasn't like what he was working on when things went wrong this would have been quite some time the extent of his recent work seems to be the rudimentary repairs on the cellar racks and some of the disassembling of this uh this wall space uh the black sort of like oil leaking forth is coming from this hole that's been mm. sealed back up i say oh it seems to be um something uh 
perhaps in need of repair behind here, an old uh, doorway of some kind. Uh, I don't suppose once you've got the hatch on, uh, might be worth uh, knocking, uh, knocking a hole through here and seeing what could be happening behind. He tests the hinge once or twice and then comes down saying, hatch is already on. And as he drops down, has a look uh, the other side. Strange that this is, um, I can have a look. Uh, what are you suggesting? Knock this out or? Yes, Am I right just to see. There was something coming from behind here, like the, the, yeah, the sticky stuff. Leaking through the bottom. If something's yeah. leaking through yeah, it, so then we need to see what it is. He comes across and, and leans down close to it and goes to like put a finger into the into the substance, uh, and then the reach. Do you stop him? Or just kind of? No. Okay. Yeah. No. Regis... I'm, I'm I'm player suspicious. Yeah, I don't yeah. think. Better him than me. Yeah. Uh, just forward and puts it. Just just taps blessed. a finger into the substance and then runs it up and 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 like rubs it on his fingers. It's kind of like viscous and and kind of like yeah. stretches a little bit and then just wipes it on his overalls. It says. Familiar. Um, thought it was tar or something. It's a little too liquid for that. Yeah, it looks like it's leaking from underneath here. Not sure where it's come from, but and he gives it a wrap where he hits brick on the other side. Not a simple knockdown job. This would be. This would take a bit of work. We'd need hammers and bars, but we could get it open and reseal it properly. Or if you're looking for something quick, we could just get some something to just seal the bottom of it and make sure whatever's coming through doesn't get any more in and then we can the the, the girls can mop the rest of it well i, I think it should be uh, valuable to have a, a good look and see the source surely i mean if it's something uh, a little bit larger it could be affecting other other sellers nearby uh, might be best to to know a bit of a, a bit of a public good if you know what i mean public service after all if we seal it up can... here it could leak into another seller and we're hardly doing the right thing if we just if we just give her a quick fix that is going to revert sooner rather than later. Right, okay. Uh, if this is what Miss Copeland wants and she's happy with it being done, it'll take a while. This is a few hours of work, at least. I'm sure she'd appreciate it, um, you know, without, a, without her husband to, to keep an eye on these sorts of things. Yes, well, we've always been good to the town, so... Um... Right, I'll set to it then. Uh, he goes over to the table, opens up his bag, uh, fiddles through it, and begins to withdraw some hammers, things like that. Uh, he'll actually probably need to like run back home and fetch some heavier materials, need like a crowbar or something to actually begin to pry the rock apart. Uh, he reckons this will take him a few hours of work, uh, and then he should be begin to be through with it. He'll run off. He'll be back in twenty, and then he can he can return to it and set to task. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the very old kind of passage. And then, yeah. do, we, do we get anything from uh, from where um, old mate's been working more recently? Uh, he was disassembling the like brick wall, hard brick wall that blocked mm. access to this, and he'd be taking that apart, as well as just repairing like mm. a a uh, keg rack that had broken. Was there anything behind that? Yeah, you head over towards it That's and what crouch I'm thinking down. Of. Mm. Um, inspecting it, you'll find uh, there's like a couple of mice that scurry away from your lantern light. Uh, I knew it. Not much more there. It seems that just the wood had rotted over time and given way, sending one of these down to the ground. And because the thing is broken, some of the kegs had to just go and be sort of plopped down on the ground nearby. Very good. Okay. We'll park the two of you there for a moment then, uh, or you can you can step up shortly, and we'll check in on the Reverend and Mr. Potterton. Uh, by your powers combined, can I get an accounting roll with a bonus dice, please? The two of you uh, spread these this information out and begin to thumb through it piece by piece, taking a bit more of your time. Crack my knuckles, I uncap my fountain pen, far more powerful <laughs> than my sword, because I don't currently have the sword. Uh, I'm 45, are you happy for me to, to make the roll? I believe so. I just realized that I didn't have my character sheet open, so I'm just going to do that now. I think you were 25 to... last time. Uh, yes, I was 25. Brilliant. So by all means, proceed, good man. All right, I start counting on my fingers, <laughs> really sounding out all the letters. Ah, oh, and it works a treat. Uh, hard <laughs> success, and then with the bonus die, uh, hard success. I'll okay. take that, thank you. Um, I think you'll find that was... Uh... Extreme if that would be... No, 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 no. You, you, you roll across it. Also, the, the success gets you quite a bit. Um, but uh, that was some rando called James C making that role. Oh, yeah, who's yeah, that? Mr. Terrible. Potterton. Elaborate on that. Oh, I'm, I'm that doesn't so count. Sorry. Also, doesn't count. Also, doesn't also, count. also, 
Boss rolls, Jim. Oh, yeah. Boss Boss. rolls. So yeah, many errors. up in here. So <laughs> I, many problems. We've fixed them all. Because uh, terrific. Wait, we'll fix them in for, post. Fix them in post. We will not. For, for anyone, uh, for anyone hanging out at, at home, we we're using the roll twenty uh, Call of Cthulhu sheets, I, and you can set it up to give you different amounts of information depending on what your settings are. And we like to have so our set to verbose, and it shows us more numbers, and it's nice. So we just love them. Yeah, that's what we're um, here for. That's what we're talking we about. Just, that's what like we're numbers. You can also set yourself to roll with your character's name or with your username. <laughs> Uh, which is... <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, all, all right. All thanks to the good folks at Roll20. Yeah. Okay. So uh, having a thumb through uh, the, the the accounts here, you reconfirm some of the information you had previously. Seemed like uh, this you get this Mr. Black who'd been there for a time. You also get a sense for how well things are going, which is actually pretty well. They have a very sustainable income. They are steadily accruing wealth. They are keeping up fine. And there was no like oh, we're getting really close and we need to take big risks or anything. Things are kind of just rolling along. They seem very uh, stable um, and a happy working family. Uh, as you go through it, though, you will notice one thing. A, a name is familiar. I'm trying to rolling along. You see uh, both the Pillings uh, were pretty regular attendants here, sort of um, uh, would come in for a, a meal uh, fairly often. And then going through it, you see that uh, the name Boris Soulsmith is present had a tab open for once again semi-regular meals and things coming in and out uh you also find markets tavistock who would have come in and had a meal uh, on occasion uh and finally you see uh what was possibly trying to be hidden uh nathaniel havering despite being now a much more to-do person would on occasion can't quite shake his sort of you know working class merchant desires and would come in just socialize meet with clients or, or meet with people in town and also share a meal or have a drink in the tavern it would appear if you're looking for a connection between all the people that can even leap between class uh they all have attended the four feathers tavern the only person absent is miss radcliffe who has never had an account <laughs> here. However, mm. with this information in mind, Jax and I will now tell you, when you met with your brother here, the very first time, you did have a meal on it. That's up to you okay. when you want to share that. Though. If. Must I? If. No. I should think not. You, you, you must not. But with you as the exception, a new connection has been found. Um, good. This takes you a little while, and by the time this resolves, the others downstairs can have set Tom to task, and you can you can reconvene and discuss as Tom goes to get his material. Very uh, quickly, with the the remnants of that check, can I just do a cursory like? Um, there, there's there's not any massively associated times like I like a meeting times or something like this as a result of when the tabs are set up and when they're added to. I'm just trying to guess if, if like. If the, it, I'm trying to rule out the possibility that this was like they were all meeting for like a ritual or something like this. And yeah. it was more people were visiting at various points and had been probably exposed to like corruption that was seeping in through the wall into the wine supply or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can confirm there, this was not a single meeting. These people did not cross paths, they came at different times different days. Right. What you can get though is this uh, none had wine, all had ale. Okay, well, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting closer. Mm. Uh, that said, as um, you as you finish this and as you look out into the like the operating tavern, there's people with tankards everywhere. Like more and significant number of people have had drinks, and even in the time period that this happened, many people had had drinks as well. I, I I'm currently working on the assumption it was a single barrel or something mm. like that. I mean, that seems fairly reasonable, but um, yeah, let's reconvene. Well, I was gonna uh, just like, as an aside, before we reconvene, I think like the the Reverend will ask Mister Potterton, like, Ed, Sir George, uh, Sir Mister Potterton, tell me, um, how 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 well do you uh, know? I, essentially, how well do you know Miss Radcliffe, and like, when when did she come to you? Oh well, so you know, I, I I I only met her a couple of weeks ago when uh, one of my one of my sisters uh encountered her after she had her trouble on the road but 
you know sometimes you meet people and i really feel like i've known her my whole life it's just uh yeah of course uh, did she um out of curiosity uh she, she mentioned that the town she came from did she uh, provide um did she give any references references you mean the uh, talking like talking talking about places in the town or you mean like a, a correspondence reference no no i i mean uh you know uh, it would not be unusual for people to cite like well-known families in areas that they'd been in as like an oh yes i am known by these people because yeah, yeah, it yeah. sets an etiquette thing for them it's mm. like oh you're known by people that i know of okay you're like you have enough connections for me to speak well, well, to you i yeah i assume that that had all been done in conversation with my my sister by the time we were introduced oh, but of course just just curiosity i am um... Uh, with Miss Radcliffe falling ill alongside these these other individuals, and there being sort of, unfortunately, no no clear connection outside of what we're finding, she seems to be an outlier. So I was just curious well, if there was anything. My theory would be that whatever brigands set upon her were based here, probably exposed the same corruption, and probably in their attack might have exposed her to it as well. That is a. Um... The solid theory, Mr. Boston. Yeah, we need I to do. be we need to be we need to be careful if we do end up in a direct encounter with them or with anyone else who might have been infected. We don't want to become we can't deal with more sick people at this point. Um No, certainly not. Um mm. No, no. Just uh put it down to idle curiosity, Mr. Boston. Thank you for indulging me. Um out out of interest, Dave, now with, like, because I got a little bit when I looked through it the first time and was able to look at the the Mr. Black. Um, mm. Given what I have in the back of my head at the moment, and, like, if I ask, you know, for... If I get from George, like, Miss Fullerton, the, the, I like, dates or, like, sort of when, can I put a little bit more... Like, is there more of a connection there than perhaps I originally found? given that there was a success? Uh, the yeah, account. there was a success. Um, you can see that Mr. Black, the, the timing works out for their both arrival and Mr. Black did pay for someone else's meal on that date. It would not be written who it was. And he has since done so a couple of times with groups of two or three. Once he even hosted a party of four. Uh, and he seems to, every like week or so, he hosts a couple other people. He also doesn't eat here every day, but pretty regularly. Uh, I'll also add that very quick. While while you're getting more and more clues, I think George is getting more and more just uh, falling deeper and deeper into the deception. <laughs> no, 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 completely no idea. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I think this is more because it was clear that Miss Radcliffe was worried about something when I sort of when we were speaking, or at least that was the impression I got. So I think the. I don't think I draw any direct conclusions, but I'm just like, ah, oh, there's a timing overlap here. There is the brigand side of things. There's obviously some connection. I'm going to be especially wary of this man, of how he interacts with us, but also like how he's responding to Miss Radcliffe and just be like a little bit more aware on the off chance that the, the, the lady is in danger. Um. As the two of you kind of resolve this conversation, uh, you realize there's someone standing in the doorway. And at first you think it's one of the, the serving girls returning to, to fetch the book. But when you look up, it's a short man in kind of a crooked, slightly flattened hat with a large overcoat on that goes so low it would trail in the mud when he walks. Uh, he's got that kind of like bow legged stance of a man more comfortable on horseback than on foot and he's standing in the door kind of brazenly watching the two of you um as a little dribble of snot pulls on the end of his uh. nose and threatens to drop down to the ground uh as he makes your eyes uh he kind of just stares at you for a moment he's clearly looking at mr potterson Charming. hello um uh, sorry are you are you hoping to speak to uh, shit, we're just 
going through some accounts with her. Uh, she's not here at the minute, but um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, you're Mr. Potterson, aren't you? That's right. And who might you be? Ah, uh, Cynthia, I understand you're a gentleman of some repute in town. Very generous assessment, but Would you uh, do the honor of shaking my hand, sir. And he leans a hand out in like fingerless gloves. Uh, one of them, a single the ring finger nail, is long, longer than the rest, and slightly <laughs> cracked on the end. I, I, I think I, I think I, I, I do. I don't think I take enough care necessarily of my reputation as I should. Uh, I don't, no, I don't think it's because I'm necessarily like the kind of like nice progressive gentleman who would not have like class bias. I think it's more like, ah, oh, yes, being seen with the common folk. <laughs> this will be good for my, my uh, you know, uh, but yes. Uh, you step up and go to us. Uh, Reverend Jennings, you are being ignored mostly, but what are you doing? Um, I think, I think I'm making a very careful assessment of this man's demeanor appearance uh you know the the clothing he's wearing the height the shape of his nose the color of his eyes uh getting uh seeing if i can pick an accent when he talks okay um, describe it to the police later <laughs> essentially because yeah i think it's it's a mixture of again i am I am aware that we have a lady in our in our uh, party who seems to be uh, potentially under some duress. These, this man, I don't. The, the Reverend is not a stupid man um, by any stretch of the imagination. This is someone who's clearly not the most reputable of people, and we've already been at least. Uh, ocularly targeted by another unpleasant individual. Um, so whether this is to report to the magistrate or whether it is, um, you know, yeah. the Reverend, I think, is well liked by his parish and his parish are a lot of good, hardworking folk. And I think perhaps the right word to the right person to say that there's someone un unsavory who uh, who's wandering around and, and nothing more than just perhaps if you would be so kind as to keep an eye on this man just just make sure that yeah. he's not causing trouble because you know we don't want that and kind of lean a little bit into the okay well if the reverend says this person isn't very good then maybe people in town just become a little colder to this person yeah. and a little less pleasant and a little more around and aware the sort of thing you could um, flag to the constabulary yeah. Uh, if yes, my lord. That man there, he ocularly targeted me in the tavern. <laughs> uh, Mr. Potterton, you step up towards him. Yep. And I make a charm check, genuinely. Uh, tell you what, we'll resolve it at the... We'll yeah, continue yeah, the conversation enough. for just a moment. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, he takes your hand and shakes it, and you can feel a slight sort of dampness uh, uh, along his gloves. And as he takes it and shakes your hand and holds it for a moment, he says, he, he then, <laughs> like, holds it for a minute and then takes your thumb with the other hand and turns it over to just ever so slightly run one of his thumbs across uh, the bridge of your finger and, and palm. And he says, Do I detect the callus there, sir? You've known some work in the past, have you? His hands are soft as I'd expected. Oh, uh, well, I, I do some practice uh, uh, training with a sword and good mm. for or anyone in this era where the the Napoleonic scourge still marches across the continent. I expect you're formidable, sir. Properly formidable. Tell me, I noticed the fine carriage outside only moments ago. Is it yours, sir? It is. That's right. Uh, why? Is it something ship? in this? Nothing at all, sir. It's a fine piece. I was wondering if you might give me a ride in it, sir. <laughs> well, we have some business we need to attend to, but I suppose... I, I, I'm, can I make a psychology check at this point just to see if I've started to cotton on oh, to his... Yeah. You're not a... Unless you've got a, a significantly... You're kind of aware he's fucking with you at this point. 
Okay. He's right. he's um, you can go ahead with the shot. He's genuinely he's like brazenly outstepping. Like you are Mr. Potter yeah. is a bit of a man of the people. He's stepping so far beyond this. You actually need to be like, get the hell away from me. What are you talking Understood. about? Uh, that said, but Mr. Potter can kind of call the bluff a little bit. That said, being seen, speaking with them, rolling it will absolutely be a reputation hit, even more so than now. Uh, Reverend, as uh, I will ask Miss Potter, why don't you go ahead and give me a charm roll? And Reverend James, if you could do a psychology or similar uh, to get an assessment of the situation. Miss Potter, you're more than welcome to make a psychology test. Uh, I, 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 think, I think it was more, uh, I'm playing him the fool. I understand that this is beyond the scope of what he would reasonably, I, I, following he, he yeah. the aware of the situation. I do forward Oh, well, Miss Potter also can kind of like, just like a little bit play the, you know, he, he, he rolls no, yeah, yeah, the time, totally, you know? totally. yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. I'll make a charm check. I'm not, I don't think, I think he knows I know, I know he knows. A so little bit in this, yeah, it possibly slips a little bit and you, yeah, uh, it's the bluff. What I'll probably do at this point is, as ask you to make a reputation roll, Mr. Potterton, to see if that reduces a little bit. Uh, Reverend so, Jennings, you get the impression that this man is, is messing with Mr. Potterton. You also remark that this was one of the two men sitting with the man you'd identified previously as Mr. Black. And as you look past, you see Mr. Black and his other companion have stepped up from the table and are just now leaving the tavern. Hmm. And Mr. Potterton, he continues to hold his hands. Uh, no reputation hit for the time being, but continuing this further, and especially out in, in public, is almost certainly to have people talking of your conf meeting with uh, threatening travelers and, and the sort uh, he continues to hold his hand and rub his finger along one of the calluses yeah let's go out to my carriage i i <laughs> I, I will say to him um i think my idea is i'm going to reassess the uh, re regain control of the situation once i have a sword in my hand very well uh he takes a step back and is now standing squarely on top of the trap door that leads down into the cellar as it has only recently been reinstalled as this happened, and as Reverend Jennings and Mr. Potterton step out to lead the way to the carriage, you will just now hear from underneath the sound of the trapdoor attempting to be opened and finding it blocked from beneath. Uh, Miss Radcliffe and Miss Wentworth, Tom is just is assessing things. Miss Wentworth, you have gone to clamber up the stairs and leave and found them locked. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> that doesn't seem great. You kind of give it a heave. Uh, like it's, it's, it's like I just certainly push and Tom's like, no, oh, I repaired that and steps up to go and take a look. Uh, Reverend like James responded, you, you hear the like rattle of something pushing up underneath it. And the man continuing to look at Potterton does not move. Can we, we, we can tell the difference between it being locked and something. And something, yeah. like, it, but you probably think like something's been yeah. placed on top of it. Like they might be just removing things around on top, something like that, yeah. Uh, give, give, give it a loud knock, hey, see if... Uh... I can shift whatever's on top there. It is, it is poorly placed, isn't it? And I'm just going to rap on it a few times. There's a knock from uh, underneath. I will, uh, I will at this point uh, just go, <laughs> just very, very sort of, <clears throat> my good man, there appears to be some people trying to get out of the cellar. Do you think you might be so kind as to move? Oh, terribly sorry. Or foot placement. He steps across to the side and the door opens and as Miss Wentworth, as Mitt with Miss Wentworth steps up, you're looking up at this rather nasty-looking gentleman who leers down towards you, and then crouch. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Just step right up and uh, move to go past him. Uh, Miss Radcliffe. No, I don't think so. As you step up, you come. He crouches down to like squat next to the trap door, and as you come up, he's fully face staring into yours and he goes hello there uh you recognize this gentleman as one of the members of broken listed heels listed heels right? i think you'll find he's got sound says broken. right at you know, hello uh i guess i'll go for a uh a, 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 like a a curtsy a look down a shy a blush, you're kind of a little trapped a on this yep it's a, it's a little... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Potterton, what are you and Reverend... I will say, yeah. this man is kind of outs yeah. overstepping. I mean, He's at this yeah. point harassing the women. <laughs> yeah, and if, if, at if Mr. He... Potterton, I've gotten out of the cell and I'm going to be looking at him like... Yeah, if he's, if he's like... I was like, I, I thought you were coming out to the carriage, friend. Or are you determined to stay in here? Um... 
you want to give me a persuade roll or something similar, Mr. Potterton? Sure. Um, I think actually, I, I think I think I probably go intimidate. I'm not good at it. Yeah, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. persuade at yeah, this point. Absolutely. I, my voice probably wavers a little. You can kind of put uh, a hand on his back yeah. and. Yeah. Yeah. Not uh, intimidating. He kind of describes it. There's the four of you are aware of the situation you're in. It's happens sometimes. What this man is doing is kind of using. He doesn't care about reputation. He doesn't. He has nothing to mm-hmm. lose here. He's not threatening brazenly. He's not really doing anything to get the constabulary involved. He's just not playing your little game. He doesn't care how he's perceived. He's happy to be here. No, he won't move. Uh, he basically just brazenly ignores you and stares down at Miss Radcliffe as he says hello. Uh, Jackson, do you want to try for an intimidate or a fast talk or something similar as you basically tell him to fuck off? Can I, can I go for an intimidate? Yeah, like, you can go uh, for an intimidate. He, he knows who my brother is. Oh, yes. Yeah, wow. It's all in the finger. Nice. As nice. Uh, yeah, you... you uh, as as we start looking at stuff, a Reverend James and Mr. Potterton tries to distract him. You suddenly, like, the... I, I'll leave it to you, but it does, like, the facade drop a little bit and suddenly you're, like, cold, capable, and you just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, like, a glance up of a... Yeah, he he sees you and, and, and steps up and says, oh, Sorry, um, don't worry about the carriage rider. Another time, perhaps. Please to meet you all. And he will step out and uh, go and to I... leave the tavern. Yeah, Before... did I, would I have caught that look if I'd just gotten out of the hole? I think on the extreme, oh. I'm yeah. leaning Jackson. I, th- I think Miss Radcliffe got away with a quiet F off. Um, I... I will uh, not, because he's over like near the this hatch, and yeah. he would need to. And we were standing. Yeah, you can to block his side. passage easily. That's right. Just not necessarily in an aggressive way, but I am just going to take one step in his direct path and say, "I'm terribly sorry." So I, I don't believe we got your name. No, I'm afraid you didn't. Oh, got him. What is it then, sir? Any names in many towns, Reverend? You'll be on the accounts book with Mr. Black. I'm afraid I'm simply... I'm not staying here. Oh, if right. you he wouldn't mind you. letting me through, and he goes to push past you. Oh, I'll um, turn to the side and be like, of course, my good man. No. Sorry, we shan't be able to make your acquaintance again. He turns around without a look behind him, heads towards the exit. I would like to get to the carriage. I'm a little worried they might try and nick it. <laughs> okay, yeah. You you head out. Uh, is is anyone not heading outside? Is anyone remaining in? Uh, I I'm going to look at Miss Radcliffe and oh, heck, catch. I was afraid she'd say that. <laughs> and catch her eye, and sort of give a very small like questioning look. Do you give any indication that you want to discuss what just happened or not? No. But if, uh. Uh. I can get across it, I, I, I'll, I'll meet you outside. I think if, if it's, can, if it's if as simple as a, a, a raised eyebrow and a shake of the head, that's s- enough for the reverend to be like. That's fine. Someone needs to tell Alice you plan to disassemble a portion and repair things. You could go and have a word to her. That's mm-hmm. true. I will do that. Okay. All right. Is anyone else going to stay with Alice or the other three of you heading out? I'd be glad to have a moment alone in the tavern. Okay. No. No, no. No, okay. no. I'm... I'm interested in the cellar and I'm going to go talk to Alice okay. as well. Okay. Uh, so trying to get rid of me. No, that's fine. You, you, you go talk to the Alice. I'll have yeah. a moment in the tavern. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, I can talk to Alice. Everyone else yeah. going in the cellar. We can okay. talk to Alice. That's fine. Uh, the Reverend and Mr. Potterton step outside. Uh, shortly after, you'll see Tom head up and he's going to go and fetch his tools and things. Miss Radcliffe and Miss Wentworth, you go and speak to Alice. Uh, you will find her uh, continuing to be... Uh, she, she's holding together, but still very much distraught and seems to be having a lack of sleep as well. Uh, she's going around the thing, and just now the sort of lunchtime rush is beginning to fade. She will offer you food if you want anything, and she will offer you uh, to fetch you a drink. Thank you. That is quite all right. My mind is very much on the sludge in the cellar. Yeah. 
Um, the, I saw the cellar. Uh, the door's repaired. Thank you very much for that. Um, uh, let just let me know what I what I owe the man, and I'll I'll see that it's paid. No, no, no. no. This is this is our charity. Dude. This is this is our goodwill to you. Um, you know, my fiance is the reverend in town, and we're just trying to make sure that everybody in town is getting along as best they can in these difficult times. So, not at all. Uh, we have noticed, however. There does appear to be something potentially leaking from behind one of the the plaster walls, the plaster coverings. Uh, Tom is going to take a closer look at that as well. We we would hate for that to become a bigger problem. I I, I wouldn't want to impose any more than I, I already have. Not I, at all. We, I, I'm sure we could deal with all of this ourselves. Simply having the cellar door returned is is, is more than enough. You suffered such a such an unimaginable tragedy, and and. You're an important part of the town, this tavern, so I think, you know, we, we're more than happy to assist in any way that we can. Um, can you give me a, uh, charm, a persuade, or similar, and you can take a bonus yeah. dice on this, as you have helped previously and, and shown to be mm -mm -mm. good-natured. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, 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 nope. Ooh. Got my bonus die, though. Hey, okay, yay, nice hard. Done. 21. Um, there's, yeah. you know, you, the, it the, the, the push... Hard. The pushback you get, you don't think is like, I secrets. It's more like, I don't want to take more charity than oh, necessary. Yeah. Like that was enough. We'll deal with the rest in time. But you kind of do go like, no, genuinely we want to do it. And she will this accept could be. it. It's more that, you know, a leak is, you know, the, the cellar door is one thing, but finding a leak, this could be you know, catastrophic. So um, she, she thanks you and says, uh, you have a free run of the place. Um, she's going to all but insist that she can, that she feeds you and, and, and the workers while they're here. So no. Tom and any others, um, to make sure that they're well cared for. Okay. We skip the ale. Okay, fine. Ms. Radcliffe? While, they, while, while, uh, Emma's talking to Alice and the other two are out, I have a, I have a plan. Oh! I have a ruse. What's your ruse? Well, it just it just occurred to me, like I managed to scare off, you know, the, one of the big bruisers. So I must have a name about the gang. I wonder there must have been like, like a little whelp, like a little uh, little 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 kid, little uh, you know, fresh faced, near do well, no yeah. good Nick, just joined up looking to prove himself. Yeah. Like name it Dicky or something, little yeah. little little Dicky. If I can catch him running around the tavern, <laughs> I could. I'd like to give him a job. I'd like to pull my pull my position in the gang. Okay. To give him a job. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and give me a. Is it just credit rating? I don't think that's. I don't think that's gonna apply. Um. What? Uh, intimidate. <laughs> oh, a the thing is, the thing is, the whole uh, gang. Reputation? The whole gang isn't present. There were three members here. Yeah. They have all departed. You could Little send Dickie a didn't letter. Tag, tag along. But this this is where we're kind of getting into adding something to the scene, which I think is great. I probably will need like a luck roll, credit rate, something to to introduce this 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 fellow into. Yeah, the that's scene. um. It, it's definitely a push. Oh, well done. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Um. As I, I thought I was going too far, but the no, no, no. dice don't lie. As this is happening, returning from like the outhouse or something, and just <laughs> buckling up behind. his breeches, <laughs> comes this like little fella uh, in like huge oversized clothing with a big hat that drops down over his legs, uh, and he is he is too young to look mean. He just looks a little silly as he gives us a little like glare around the town, and then notices he's been left behind. Wolfs down the rest of his drink and begins to scurry out of the room after his companions, I'll, but you can step to intercept him. I'll intercept him as subtly as I can and hand him a little scrap of paper with the sigil that I've spotted twice so far and just say, Listen, Dickie, we've got another job for you. Got to lend I a can't hand with the read. works in the cellar. <laughs> and keep an eye out for this picture. It's just a picture. You can read pictures, all right? Just keep an eye out for this picture in the cellar and you lend it. Linda Hand works in the cellar. Cellar? Yeah, you have a look, good look around when I'm not here, all right? Sure. You do this You do this for us, and uh, you're going you're gonna to work your way up, all right? You're going to make a name for yourself. That's what you want, isn't it? Right, you want to impress me? You want to impress Arthur? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to impress him. Right. Which way up does it go? Doesn't matter. You'll figure it out when you see it, won't you? Right, okay. And if it's the other it's way up, so it's still it's relevant. So yeah, yeah, it's still, it's still relevant. Yeah, Goodness. and if it's back to front, it's still relevant. 
Yeah, yeah. It's still and if there's relevant. other text, it's still yeah. relevant. Dickie, you've got everything you need, all right? Now shut up. Right, right. Can't. I'm not good with a hammer. I'm not a craftsman. I'm a killer. It's okay, you just need, just lend a hand. You just hold the hold the hammer. You hold the lantern. You say yes sir, no sir. Three bags full, sir. Right. Yes. You just sir. keep an eye out. No, all right? sir. A number of bags full. I'm on it, Mole. <laughs> I'm on it. You can trust me, Mole. You can trust me. I got it. Um. All right. Best stay incognitious. Uh. He winks at you and uh, scurries out. Uh. He is gonna. You can point out. Tom. I made a terrible mistake. He's gonna scurry out after Tom. Uh, to go and introduce himself as an assistant. Bye bye, Miss Radcliffe. Uh, Miss Wentworth, I suspect you. Miss Radcliffe, is this an, uh, a secretive thing? Because I think Alex, you were intending to. Oh, keep yeah, tabs. I gotta be. Uh, at because least I was I, right there. I, I've gotta be. Oh, well, no, I thought when you were talking to Alex, I agree, I, I agree. Could, okay. Go ahead and, and give do me. That. that was my cunning plan. I think I probably will need a, a stealth or similar. Stealth or, uh, or fast talk. Sleight of hand. Sleight of hand works for me. Yep. You sure? Yeah, the conversation Excellent. was a bit of, bit, of, bit of bonus. It's just like it's the positioning. It's about yeah. the positioning. Yeah. It's like so putting a quick, a quick pillar discussion. in the yeah. fireplace yeah. between... Uh... Good. Yeah. Excellent. Right Nailed it. Um, is there anything else the two of you would like to do in the area? Okay. Oh, no, I think we're good. I've okay. taken up enough of everyone's time. It's yeah. ridiculous past. roles. Uh, and outside... Uh, so, uh, Reverend and Mr. Potterton, as you step Hello. outside, uh, you can see, uh, one of the, uh, uh, like a horse is just now being wheeled around, uh, with Mr. Black, uh, on top of it, and is beginning to head out of town. On foot follows another of, uh, the men standing inside. This one's like a larger, uh, figure with thick sausage-shaped fingers who's just beginning to sort of walk along in the trail of the horse, which is outpacing him. He's not attempting to stay together. Uh, and the gentleman you were seeing with the sort of snot-nosed fella is just now walking up to the side of your, uh, carriage, uh, and appears to just be admiring it. As you guys I over and sort of, like, runs a finger on the side. Oh. oh. I, th I was worried they were going to be. This is going to be a, a grand horse larceny kind of event. Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm happy that I'm not seeing it currently roll away. I think I, I, I relax a little bit. I will walk over to the carriage though and just. I'd probably go over to the back and like open the trunk equivalent where my sword is, just so yeah. I can. Yeah, I feel a little show secure. the piece. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was that. Um, he's not looking to linger too much further, uh, unless there's anything you want to say, he goes over, inspects it, and then sort of, uh, gives a nod, and then turns on his heel, and will follow the others in the same direction. Um, I'm going to stop for a second as I watch them go, and in my head I think, they're gonna leave the tavern, and we can't get the constabulary on them once they've left the tavern. They must have a camp outside town, it's probably where they're probably close enough to where they set on uh, Jane. I wish I could figure out where it was, and I start trying to like frantically think of something I could say that could uh, like limit where they are. Do I know? I actually have a little bit of natural world. I have a little bit of I think like some some of the, some track? track and stuff. I'd love it. I would adore a track roll. Sure. Um, I can try, I can do track. Um, uh, I think, but just flavoring wise, I think I probably be, I probably like, I mean, maybe I do just like look if they have nettles clinging to their clothes yeah. or something. Oh that yeah. Uh, like, go, yeah. Okay. I can see it. Um, track's my favorite. I, think, I can I think see, track. um, I can I think, see I think navigate. It, I think it's or... gotta be track. I have a higher I think, natural world. It, I think this track. is track here and that's the yeah. flavoring of it. Cause if they don't have nettles, it's tracking it through another means like the water. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm pretty tempted to lock that. <laughs> I've, I think I've got something for you if you do. Okay, let's do it. It brings me to a really nice round number on my luck, okay. so I uh, can't resist. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, nettles Jim, it is. Jim, would that number happen to be zero? No, that's no. Because that's, that's a very that's round the round number. number. It's, <laughs> it's, it's got a zero in it. Okay. All right, cool. Um, okay. Uh, you're going to get two things on this. Uh, one is, um, yeah, you do spot some nettles or similar clinging to the, the edge, the, like, sweeping along the bottom of this man's coat. You see it on the other gentleman's view. And also the horse that was there has, like, a bit of mud and muck and grass and things like that. Uh, the Pendlehaven Woods to the south 
are mm-hmm. a large and unowned are oh, they probably under some lords uh ownership but they're kind of a bit like untamed uh to the south there a group of men could easily camp without being seen and the uh the sort of nettles and things drink that the other thing you'll notice is that is not the direction they're going uh they are taking the the four tavern sits at the crossroads to the south that would take them back that way they are heading pointedly not pointed they're heading to the west to which you know there is that would be the way you would take to go to your property it's the Mm. way you would go to get to the reverend's chapel um and uh some other towns in that area but it's not to the south there's a couple of farms and things out there but they're not going it appears they're not returning perhaps they're just taking an an evening uh circuit or maybe they're remaining in tarryford the horse play at least wise. is leaving Tarryford. The men walking, you know. I, I put player wise. I think I think they're probably since I they know now I'm out of the house. They're probably going to rob my place. Yeah, I have no. Maybe. I would have no idea. I wouldn't even think to dream that they would do that because I, I probably don't. They're very unsavory looking gentlemen, and Miss Radcliffe's mentioned being set upon by bandits. They're, you know, yeah. I can just, dream. Uh, I just don't. Well, maybe. Like you, I, I, I wonder. I, my thought would Your be more. Your family is still there. I probably don't know that they have like they. Probably, I, in my head, like they don't know where my house is. Like they, yes. if, and if they find it out, I have all my staff there. Yeah. That would be like a boldness. It, it would it, be. It, it would be. Yeah. Yes, it would be. It would be completely out of character, and, and yeah, it's not it a also, fortress, but it's it's insane. brazen in in daylight. I, or that's it's said, also like borderline knowledge of... suicidal for them. Yeah. Like yeah. if they get caught and they get killed, not a constable in the world is going to give a single shit that a bunch of yeah. like ne'er like ne'er do well people who don't seem to have any permanent address got killed by a very well renowned lord of the town. But what we don't know is that they know I'm out. They know yeah. who's there. They have a layout of the place. You also, you also don't, you don't know have a, a target. You don't have a. I would say your security is like solid but like you do kind of go on reputation there's this there's this like illusion of defense Mm. that who would dare and what you Mm. saw a little bit with this gentleman is he would dare you know and they might dare you don't actually have like barricades and men with guns patrolling the area your the location of your property would be easily discovered too like it's mortview house like it's that one you know it's mentioned in the area I can totally see it going either way at this point. I genuinely is there a role that I can make to, to see if we if I if we can figure out if George would sort of go, oh, actually, my place might be a threat because I think that otherwise it could be really funny for him to go. Now's my chance. They're going west to the Pendlehaven Woods yep. and jump on a horse and try and like. Get out there. I, I think I'll <laughs> leave it more in your. You don't. The house is the horse is outpacing the others. The others by the time they walk all the way there, mm. it will be damn near nightfall. Like, and they're they're sauntering. They're not charging off. They didn't look to be armed except unless they had a couple of hidden knives. No, you don't think they're going for like a brazen assault. Or- I I don't I yeah I think I I think I don't consider really the possibility that they could be yep. wisely or not. Uh, in which case, I'll make my case with Pendlehaven shortly, but we okay. probably should resolve what's happening at the pub first. Um, we can, uh, unless there's anything further, we can re in, regroup the four of you and you can make some plans. Okay. All right. All four of you gather just outside of the tavern. Uh, Tom, having been introduced to Dickie, uh, will go to begin the basically the, the breakdown. It will take him a couple of hours, so not very long. By the time he got to anywhere else, he would he would finish. Don't know at what way this would happen, but we need some kind of either like friendly little terrier or like something else to come along with the name Harry, because then we can have Tom, Dick, and Harry. And I feel like uh, that yeah. is a hey. yeah. Um, I briefly, I'll, I'll briefly mention the 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 people in the corner, the ones some people perhaps I thought might have been connected to those that set upon you uh, Miss Radcliffe oh they were heading west out of the town I noticed they have nettles on their clothing a, a type of grass a mud they'll be camping in Pendlehaven woods and if they're heading west there's probably not much of them I would suggest I ride down to the constabulary now I can leave I presume there were multiple horses on the carriage I was going to say actually we've established I have multiple horses and have kind mm-hmm. of taken that precaution before um 
I could ride down to the constabulary and go with the constable into the woods while there's less of them there, make sure that we can resolve the situation, make uh, sure they're no longer the an issue. The woods are big, 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 big. There is absolutely an opportunity. They're finding them will be a little bit needle in a haystack, but yeah. Mm. Uh, um, George, your your sense of adventure never never fails to uh, uh, let us down. Um, but that's such a, a big job. I understand the wood the woods are quite dense and deep and dark, and well, it could be quite a search. Um, I'd feel much better if if we continue our our investigation into the sickness before anyone else falls. Uh, I I'd hate to waste any time that could be spent to save save a life. I'm happy to. I'd just be worried that their actions could disturb things. As we just saw, they have made the tavern not exactly an easy place for us to continue our investigations. The other thing is- and Are you I, sure I, that they're the brigands, that, that, that they are the same brigands that set upon Ms. Radcliffe? I mean- It's not it, likely. Uh, you never described the them to us. Well, that, that was on the, uh, closer to the to the Potterton's estate, but I, I seem to recall they, they, they fled north, not, not south. At any rate, even if they're not, I think it's visible that they're connected to what's happening. I, I think, think it's they clear are. they're connected to what's happening in Tarryford. I mean, they, they the, 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 the nexus of all of the infection seems to be in the heart of that tavern. I, I make sure everyone's caught up to date on the details of, of what we found in the accounts. I think to a very minimum, Mr. Potterton, you're going to the constabulary and letting them know that there's a number of unsavory people wandering around to keep an eye on, certainly not a bad idea. I don't know that you yourself need to be in jeopardy, but uh, a word to the constabulary, keep an eye on people of, of a specific persuasion, make sure that they're uh, not given quite as, as much free reign. I think that is a sensible plan. Um, That's all right. Well, seems a good idea. Then I can I can go and speak to the constable, and maybe that'll give us some more insights. Uh, unless there's something more immediately useful, we still do have a dangling uh, lead, I suppose. What's happening over at the uh, What's happening over at the the uh, North Lake Estate? The two new arrivals. Uh, yeah, yeah. There. I was going to suggest that we um we made good on our on our uh, message and, and pay them a visit this afternoon. Um, you're more than yes. welcome to accompany us, Mr. Potterton and Miss Radcliffe, um, if, if that is of interest. I'm, I'd be happy to accompany. I think that's why, Miss Radcliffe. Um, I it would be honoured to have you as a guest. If you plan to spend some more time in Terryford, it would be good for you to uh, start to know the local uh, folks. Uh, yes, yes, that should be fine. Although I am. Starting to feel a little faint. Uh, perhaps a, a, a brief introduction is is the least I can commit to. Certainly. Well, I'll make sure we are ready to leave. Uh, if um, you should need some additional rest. Quite. Thank you. So, um, well, the... and in that case, if I if I do need to depart alone, I'm I'm quite sure I can make it back to the to the estate uh, alone. So the only thing I'll say is that the North Lake Estate is to the south. It will be mm -hmm. about an hour and change-ish to get there by carriage. Um, it's also to the south that it's the Pendlehaven Wood to go to. Yeah. So you will ride past the woods to get there. Uh, looking at that and reviewing it, I expect the Pendlehaven Woods will probably be under North Lake. Like, technically they own it or something. Like, they're allowed to hunt in it and that sort of thing, but it's pretty wild. Um, is anyone remaining in town and wants to look at... Basically, uh, stay with Tom as they do the... the the, the construction or um otherwise like be, got ready, for. be nearby or do you want to all head down to the well we made uh, a we made a, a a note that we were going to go visit them so we're definitely going to okay. do that the reverend and i all right uh I, I don't know whether uh jim you want 
George to take a detour by the constabulary, but that was the... I'm happy to be get dumped there as well, depending on how long it will take. I, I, in fact, I probably, I probably, maybe I would just assume I'll spend some time talking to the constable and, and um, uh, the three of you can go to the... I'm, I'm happy to proceed, however. We can, the, the constabulary can just be alerted when the opportunity... If you're coming, if you're planning sure. to come back here after the meeting, which is pretty basically like a touch base not, and, and organise the more formal meeting, was my understanding, you can just head back, check in on the tavern and alert the constabulary at the same time. It's basically just like a, hey, heads up, there was a suspicious characters keep an eye out rather than like a get your guns and go and deal with um, certainly okay awesome uh so uh the four of you gather your carriage and head back out of town uh traveling south as you uh go towards uh the north lake estate you will see that there is the 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 large and dark pendle haven woods uh which sort of um filled with like sort of you know the twisted trees and things uh thick thick uh, um, stands of trees that people could easily hide within and there's a number of like uh, big deer tracks throughout it that people could follow there are also a couple of like more established paths that go in there um, it is not wholly uninhabited there's a couple like older families that are in there that have territory set up but you don't like know any of them they're not of your status so none of you really have and they don't none of them attend your church reverend so you don't know any of them but you see a couple of uh, paths that go off and in, uh, through this area um uh, jackson molly ha is not aware of the exact location where they're set up you haven't been to it you just know that they said they they're would probably moving around yeah and they just said they would set up in the um, so you're not you're not aware of it. You as you go past, you kind of like crane your eyes and have a little look, and you don't immediately see it or any signs. Um, eventually, you get to the point where you turn off and head up towards the North Lake Estate. Um, uh, the estate itself, you can see the sort of like, you know large uh, gates around the side where you are uh, received by some of the staff and allowed inside. You had called ahead, and your characters come inside and uh, uh, park. There you will see another carriage, which is not one of the uh, the uh, Elizabeth, this is presumably from the cousins that have arrived this year, which implies they are possibly present. Um, and as you uh, disembark, the doors open, one of the staff receives you, and then shortly Elizabeth will meet you. Uh, Reverend. How fancy is the carriage? Um, yeah, give me, does anyone have a praise? It looks nice enough. A uh, praise uh, might more... give you some extra... I'm definitely more looking at it being like, is this some cousins who've rocked up in like your average sedan? Have they rocked up in like a Beamer yeah. or have they rocked up in like a mm. Ferrari? Which like, cousins what are we? These? What kind of vibe are we getting from mm. this? It, it, does it appear to be a family carriage or like maybe one that was hired? Because I usually you would you would you'd at least have some indication. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, I'm I curious. Think we've got just praise if no yeah. one else does. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a praise. I'm more going like, what do I know about? Yeah. This carriages is, in general this would definitely go down in appraise getting getting the sort of sense of it um, uh, on the service you just get on it's kind of middle of the range you don't, you don't get okay, a lot of it but it's yeah. a good, it, it is a good thought and, and a, um a good question i have a more direct angle i'd like to take very quickly yeah. as we as we pass by the uh, carriage um i know that decorations are all the rage these days like you know you put you 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 put fancy looking stuff on things, even if they're Lanterns, not, even if not the nicest tassels. carriage. I would like to look for any kind of filigree uh, along the edge of this thing, and if if there's any occult symbols, genuinely, I feel like like if we are like if we are sort of suspecting that these are weird occult cousins, like I think maybe it's it's the kind of thing that I can imagine like okay. people doing, like hiding like weird symbols on their on their carriage. Um, so the kind of thing George could imagine people doing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. I also think. Yeah. It, it, Historically, I think of the time, like the early, well, this is a little later, yeah, but like the like early Thelemites and stuff were doing that sort of shit. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, give me a, I, I actually, there's, you're not immediately going to see um, occult symbols on it, but go ahead and give me a spot hidden roll as you, as you do a, a pass around. Failure. Nothing nothing amiss uh, that you can clearly see. It seems to be fairly mundane black carriage. Um, not one of the sports style. It, it could it could accommodate some. It would be capable of carrying some amount of luggage, which keeps in touch with them arriving to do it, and they probably have more coming uh, in the near. Um, okay. Uh, as uh, you come inside, you will shortly be received by Elizabeth, uh, Miss Elizabeth, in the uh, foyer. 
uh, uh, where she where she takes your hands firstly, uh, Emma, and she says, I received your letter. I was so glad to hear of it. And thank you so much for coming so shortly. Wonderful. We just didn't think um, it would be very best to wait, are you, knowing that your cousins are in town and how close we are in the parsonage. Yes, yes, no, it's, it's, it's a fine opportunity. Unfortunately, they were rather busy last night and they still haven't risen. I was hoping that if they were up for lunch, they might be able to meet, but still sleeping in. Um, they keep to their own times. How but, unusual. Yes. Very suspicious. Yes, well, I they um have their own interests and hobbies and they've really thrown themselves into it. But um, come evening, I'm certain they will be interested to dine for supper sometime or, or perhaps a, a, an, an evening uh, rendezvous. But why don't you come and, and sit with me in the library and we can we can, uh, we can catch up. And I'm afraid I haven't uh, made your this introduction. Is, uh, Miss Jane Radcliffe. She uh, has been staying with the Pottertons and we've been happy, happy enough to have met her a couple of days ago and she's been quite delightful. Miss I don't think I don't think I'm Alex as a player very suspicious obviously but I don't think uh, Emma has put it together really right it was a bit she thinks yeah. she she thinks Jane is probably just a little bit ill-mannered yeah. with the crawling around on the floor it's it's I would love for her to be suspicious but she's just not that clever <laughs> uh uh Miss Elizabeth uh uh greets you Miss Radcliffe it says a, a grand pleasure and a companion of, of Mr Potterton you've been staying there for some time well um yes. He took me in. Uh, he and his family have been j just as generous as the rest of the town in, in looking after someone uh, uh, down their luck. Uh, and so, uh, yes, I, think, well, I was just quite fortunate to be here. I think I probably give um, Elizabeth a bit of a kind of ex exchange a look of like, see, I brought you a gossip present. Like, yeah. Um, as as she goes, she turns to I brought you, I brought ah, you and a how... present. It's gossip. Uh, you. Anyone? It, These two gonna bonk. <laughs> uh, does anyone? Uh, I probably doesn't need a psychology one for those who are more familiar. You will know. Probably George doesn't. But uh, Reverend's probably your pickup because you've got the psychology. Uh, and because just you were be there, like, Dave. Dave, Dave, if you do not let me roll psychology for drama, I'm <laughs> gonna go ahead, be so go, mad. Go ahead and make a drama psychology roll, then, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, do I need to? Like, make no, it, or you just give gonna... me the give me the roll, no, and I'll give you some regardless. All right. All right. It's just the service number. I'm looking at this big wall of red here. Uh, look, Honestly. it's a 56 over 50. Do I need to give I you six don't... points of... No, like, but that's it. I You're not going to need... get under there. You will know a... She was... She and Mr. Potterton were a potential yeah. match for a time. It seems she has not wholly forgotten that, but nothing, nothing more. And, yep. she, and she hides it well. You you have the thought, but she doesn't let anything slip. Uh, she is nothing but polite uh, with Miss Radcliffe and Mr. Potterton. Um, who she who I, she also reintroduces herself to, and then begins to walk to the all, library while calling for tea. That's all I need. That um, all I need is is was there anything on the face? Yes. Probably. Okay. Uh, <laughs> as as the Reverend and as someone who's known Miss Elizabeth for a while, again, just an extra little like. The the Reverend is not necessarily like a spot hidden kind of attentive person. He is aware of like people's psychology discomfort. and discomfort yeah. and being there. You gotta be good at being like, ah, underneath the surface you seem a little distressed. How may I like subtly offer aid in a time where no one's allowed to talk about their fucking feelings? <laughs> Come on, yeah, God. Like, Everyone needs therapy. Instead, they have God. <laughs> right. Yeah, whatever works. So that's um, uh that's yep. Yeah. Uh, Miss Elizabeth walks you through into the library, where she, or probably one of the parlors, where she sits with you, tea is brought out, and uh, embarks in idle gossip. Uh, the cousins, as mentioned, do not appear, but Elizabeth is glowing about them, talks about them coming in and kind of up the area, and she maintains that, like, keen positivity that uh, she uh, showed with you, Miss Wentworth, when you met yeah. in the garden, saying, you know, things seem clear, she's been throwing herself into, into her work, she's, uh, you know kind of re-entering into society and and it has been it's been a night it's nice to have people in the uh in the house once more uh yeah. she asks after the four of you and what you have been up to and do you she doesn't seem to mention anything about this sleeping sickness uh or anything of particularly suspicious note um is there any angle that the four of you are taking i think we're just trying to find out about what the cousins have been doing sure um, yeah. How? How? Point? Yeah. Yeah. What do you? What do you ask? Um. Their names are Robert and Diane. From the angle, the angle of you've just been, you've just been, seen so much 
more vibrant and happy the last couple of times that I've seen you. What on earth are these cousins of yours doing to uplift this place so much? Oh, yes. Well, they've, I mean, coming in, it's really just nice to have talked to once more. And with Mother away looking for her matches afar, uh, it's nice to have, well, friends here that I can see with. Uh, more friends, I mean, of course, rather than just not to, it, like, it's, it's been it's fine. Family is important. They've been it's own. good to me. They, they speak with me a lot. They're interested in my, in, they're interested in the town and they've begun to meet with people. They, you know, they've taken me on night walks on occasion through the gardens. You wouldn't believe how different they are at, well, you'd forgive me, of course. Um, well, they can be kind at might. night. <laughs> they can be kind at night. They can be fine. And I'm, well, I'm refinding my strength and they give was... me great strength. They were on such a night walk last night. You said they were out, out late, and they not. Oh, yes. Well, they they find the night is a mother. Well, well, it can be quieter, and it allows one time to think. I believe I'm. It allows one to be one's true self. I've always found a a, a nighttime walk is a rather different thing to one at day. One must not hold oneself quite so formally. One can well, one can really strive. And you say they were uh, last night, and they, they they haven't risen yet. No, not yet. They returned in the, the wee hours. It's still asleep. Has anyone tried to rouse them? Uh oh. Oh. Uh well. No, they've they've left rather hands that they've risen until they're ready. The oh. staff will prepare something when they rise. I'm Miss Radcliffe has uh, recently had experience with a sleeping sickness, which may or may not have put her on edge in this particular case. Uh, surely you've heard uh, all around Tarryford, people have been falling to slumber and not waking, hence Miss Radcliffe's oh. anxieties. No, I'm sorry to say I rather haven't. I've been, well, I've, I've not left the estate in some time. I've not made my way into Tarryford, and you were some of the first guests we've had in a while without the ball and, well, but I'm so sorry to hear that, Miss Radcliffe. You're handling yourself yes. remarkably well you seem quite able yes yes thank you I've, I've regained my strength um day by day and hour by hour but i'm afraid some of the other uh ailers in the town have have, have left us they've, they've passed on uh, uh given that we've just brought you this news I'm, I'm sure your cousins would forgive you if perhaps an attempt was made to wake them what great misfortune i tell me is is yes i First, well, um, uh, she'll call for one of the staff members late. and say, "Leave a, a make a. Um, would you see if my cousins are, are ready to wait?" Um, and they'll head off to check. Uh, she will say they have slept to this hour and passed before. Uh, but oh, yes, it's it, best to check Indeed. on things. Tell me, uh, you've spoken with Doctor Parsons, then you've raised your concerns with him. Uh, yes, oh, the we poor have man is frantic. To him. This is concerning and, and, and rather unfortunate. It seems that, uh, well, huh, not a summer can pass without some misfortune. But um, I'm glad to hear that you're, well, looking into it, you are also capable and, or well, it seems a shame. Uh, here's a cloud on a sunny day. Uh, My no, lady to ruined a whole, no, a whole week. Change the topic slightly then. You... Now, you have definitely convinced me about these night walks. They sound absolutely delightful. Yes. What are the features of the garden that seem most important when, when you're taking one of these night walks? What are the things that you were drawn to? Oh, it's grand. You wouldn't believe it. See how the moon shines and catches every fountain and feature. No shadows, cars, it's black as sure, but with your lanterns you can find beauty in it all the same. Miss Emma, you must join me sometime. You must come with us. I'm sure that my cousins would 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 love to have another uh, well, companion. We can delighted. stroll and, and take in the area, and perhaps a carriage ride as well. We've toured well. They've toured. I haven't quite found this. I haven't left the estate, and I've said, but they've taken in the area, and they tell me that Tarryford is all the different. What? You, well, you've I'd been... be delighted to join you. You've been wandering the estate for quite some time. You must find yourself an expert on uh, the local area if you've been wandering through it well my 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 own home of course yes i feel and, i know every feature of it and the grounds extend quite far south don't they into the into the woods oh yes well <laughs> one's bravery has its limits mr potterton and uh, the woods are a little more well 
I don't quite carry the equipment. Sword machetes, things to cut through underbrush. I was, I was quite impressed, you understand. And I, I, of course, I still am. But I, yes, I, I'm well, perhaps less concerned. Perhaps more the gardens than the forests. <laughs> but hell, perhaps uh, soon I'll make my way down there too. Um, uh, the staff member returns, whispers in, and she says, ah, No such sleeping sickness. They're rising now, and we'll probably be down shortly if you'd like to wait oh. a moment to make your introductions. Yeah, I'm delighted. Uh, if I may ask one final question, you, I'm just interested. You've found them quite understanding with the uh, uh, new situation arising, and, and I. I maybe can't verbalize this as well, but what I, what I would like to do is I would like to figure out if she's told them the spooky stuff and how how they dealt with that. But yeah. I would like to do it through the lens of, oh, how understanding have they been about the change in situation and like inheritance and stuff? And, she says, yeah. oh, yes, George. And she reaches out and takes your arm for a moment and it lingers, but ever so shortly uh, on your upper arm, which Miss Radcliffe and Reverend, actually all three, probably everyone but oh, Mr. Yeah. Potterton not, mostly really picks up. Uh, uh, before before drawing when she says, yes, yes, they've been so fine. I've, well, I've found them stalwart companions. I've shared all but everything with them, in, even including, well, the ball last year. They were, they were interested in it, certainly, and they, they've, they've asked me much of it. I've found them to be, well, <laughs> Reverend, you know, the, the beauty in confession. Indeed, uh, Miss Snowflake, indeed. Mm. And it is, may I say, very, very good to see you looking as well as you are. I am sorry that you were not able to make it to church as often, um, seeing as, as, and I am uh, feel remiss for not taking more time to make myself present in your home to uh, provide the sorts of um, services uh, as one reverend may in such situations but oh it's, it's good to see you again eliza yes I'm, I'm i'm grateful for the offer and i i knew always your door was open no i simply just i found myself more comfortable at home but ah uh, here now i can hear them on the stairs and come meet my fair cousins uh and she steps up brushes off her dress and will walk out in the main entrance or of you trailing behind her uh, just now coming down the stairs, uh, leaving from the direction which would have been Lord and Lady Northlake's uh, rooms, uh, come the two fair cousins, Robert and Diana Northlake. They are younger, they would be like mid 20s, and uh, each well, has than me. like thick, almost <laughs> shining dark hair. Robert swept off to the south and Diana's sort of like run long down behind her. And you can see a remarkable similarity as they are twins. Note they are not identical, obviously being male and female, but also they have differences between them. Uh, Robert's jaw slightly, you know, you know more chiseled, whereas uh, uh, Diana has sort of softer features around her, but there is a similarity that extends beyond just siblings. Um, and as they walk down, they do keep themselves in synchronization coming down the stairs. Uh, as they get to the top, Robert stands for a moment longer before Diana sweeps down towards you and she and she says, Elizabeth, these are your companions who you mentioned were coming. I, um, well, would you introduce me to them? And Elizabeth will do the rounds, introducing each of you eventually to her dear cousin, Diana Northlake. Uh, Diana uh, receives you uh, very uh, uh, in, in a very friendly manner. Um, and then Robert comes down and is introduced to each of you as well. Um, he doesn't quite have the confidence and like Boys. ease that Lord yeah. Northlake had, but he's getting there. And he kind of makes up for it with being more friendly and a little more down to earth than Lord, or like a little more grounded and willing to get his hands out so you get the impression than, than Lord Northlake. One, like they're not fully done up in like their finery, like they're in like more like comf not night clothes, but like comfortable dressing clothes to spend the day here. Um, uh, Robert will say, I heard you um, asked uh, after a, well, uh, luncheon or something at some time. And while I'm uh, sorry to say we can't do so now, as my sister has her studies and I have some work around the garden to attend to, we would be very, very eager to, to meet with all of you soon. I, I understand you were all, well, involved in uh, the events of uh, last summer, with the exception of um, you, miss. Uh, yes. That's right, I've only recently arrived in town. And tell me, are you familiar with your, well, 
companions' experiences? I have uh, heard riveting tales in, in much detail, yes. Then let us not bandy words. There is more to this world than we currently understand, and it is interesting, it is thrilling, and my sister and I find ourselves drawn to this strange space. Uh, Elizabeth does a little like a, oh, you, and sort of starts around and goes, such is not polite conversation, but yes, uh, all of us here are, well, our minds more open than others, perhaps. Yeah, mm -hmm. Forgive me, interested. I'm the, uh, I suppose, you, 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 you're perhaps interested in how to uh, deal with such more occurrences should they threaten, uh, threaten, threaten to make themselves known again, or uh, are you perhaps more interested in the systems employed by? Uh, the, the, the North Lake ancestors in which they were able to turn uh, bounty from these places. Oh, no. We, we, we seek no riches. We've been gifted by this uh, property and that's more than enough. Already we now look to how we can divide it, that Elizabeth might keep some holdings and uh, keep her own fortune. And no, my sister and I are and she finishes the sentence, we don't need quite so much in the world. No, we're more drawn to the, the intricacies the how thing. We look to see God's hand and what it would, where it would steer us, perhaps. Um, he goes, yes, my sister is, is, is drawn to strange books and things that imply more secrets in, in the world. You, well, you saw something of the, the North Lake's past and, um, well, we bear that same blood. We're interested in where our paths might lead. We're interested in what could exist beyond this world, and we look to, to draw greater meaning from it. Where some philosophers study the leaf, we study, well, it all. The cosmos around it. It's a very noble pursuit. Uh, yes, well, such is the privilege of the elite. We have the time to spend it where we wish. We have no fields to tend to, so we cast our minds and eyes elsewhere. And have you found anything in, in uh, your time in Tariff thus far? Well, we've, um, rather have. This is an interesting town. It's a, a very old town. There's been much that's happened here in the past, and we're rather interested in what happened before all this is set up. North Lake Hall's been here for the Aeons, and, well, from my understanding of Elizabeth's experiences, has some cyclical nature of other dimensions and other planes opening and perhaps there is more of it here we've also been made aware of some strange sleeping sickness which is spreading throughout the area and find this rather curious as well could, could i make a brief psychology check to test whether i get bad vibes at all because otherwise i'm like great we've found friends allies let's tell them everything <laughs> we'll all team up do you guys have medical knowledge let's get you on yeah. board uh go ahead and make a make a psychology roll uh, anyone can do so oh wow i Ooh. have 10 in it oh my god oh, georgie porgy because because i i am interested in it too as an outsider but i have good intentions i know it <laughs> so i <laughs> i like to go okay, for a psychology you know? roll Ooh. In uh, in a slightly direction, different direction. My usual kind of my more usual psychology role. In that you know, what are they carrying? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. My, we got nice, How nice wealthy episode, are these so suckers? Yeah. Maybe they're, they're that's right. Pon folk as well. <laughs> um. So uh, I'm not going to discount suspicion because there is room for it. These are strangers who seem to have kind of thrust themselves. You know, they've thrust themselves into the third act of what was a, you know, three-part play. Like, they, like they've come in late, yeah. and they seem to know a lot yeah. already and really be confident. Like, all right, let's all be friends and let's work together on this. Um, but that said, they do seem genuine. Miss Elizabeth does back them quite significantly and seems to be quite friendly with them, and she kind of reiterates that this is their... their they're carrying. Um, George, with an extreme, there's something not... Right oh. here, you you feel that slip a little bit, and they're too forward with it all. They're friendly, sure, but there's a there's a there's falseness something. to it underneath. These two are thick of thieves, and you really get the impression that 
if it was them against the world, they'd be comfortable with that. They're going to look after each other before anyone else. That's not to say that they won't look after Elizabeth. Yeah. They do yep. seem to have treated her well, but yeah. They, if, if it came down to it, they'd just look after each other. In the ultimate service of themselves. Uh, yeah, and, and last... there is also like, yeah, they they are not, when you ask like, are you looking to like protect it? They went, we're looking to understand, understand it. Not yeah. as a like, cause it, but they're definitely looking for greater knowledge for themselves. I think if anything like caught on my brain with just mm -hmm. a very weird success there, it would have been the things beyond this world. Cause I'm thinking, yeah, I know what's beyond this world and it sucks. Yeah. Like that to me is a little bit of a, yeah. we don't want to do that. You shouldn't want to do that. Zero stars. If you would, let me add one last thing to that. This is this is almost silly. I think it's more just like something that George fears for a second and can discount. Uh, he can't help but think that two people got left in the other world, ultimately, in one way or another, a man and a woman, and two people have come out, a man and a woman. There's, there's, I, I just I just have one moment of like, this isn't Captain Stone and the oh, the former Miss Wentworth changed somehow. Is it? No, no, no striking features between the, the two, but they are a little odd and do seem to have, at least in the societal status way, sprung from nowhere, but not in physical features nor mannerisms. They okay. don't appear to have the similarity. Miss Wentworth's sister or absent. Good. Captain Stone. So good news, James. You can write that scenario. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. Um, I don't... The Reverend does have, like... Passing suspicions isn't really noticing anything amiss outside of just you seem to know an awful lot. Um, I think because of the mention of looking at the hand of God specifically, I think he's he's a little like taken by their talking about studying, um, and might you know if I it could be so bold as to ask I, I have also been making some cursory uh, investigations into the the worlds beyond what is uh, is known and seen to us and it would be um extremely uh extremely interested to, to see uh, any of your studies you'd be willing to share and I'd, I'd be happy to share some of my own notes of course rudimentary though they are but I am a man of God and I'm also interested in the way his hand moves both us and the worlds and Potentially those beyond what we see. I, uh, I hope that is not too forward, sir. Diana, it'll be Diana that says, no, no, not too forward at all. No, I'd be more than willing to share what we've found. I have a number of rather interesting tomes that we've collected in studies, and my brother and I have travelled through much of Europe collecting similar things. Consider our library yours, Reverend. If you would do us the great honour of sharing your own understanding, then we would give you all the knowledge. Yes. But all minds collected, all the greater. I would be uh, very pleased to take you up on, on that offer if you would let me know uh, the most appropriate time to, to call. Uh, I, I would be happy to. Why, now seems all, now seems rather fine. I was going to move myself to my study and continue to do some research. Why don't you join me now? If that's not too forward. Of course. What time is know. it? Uh, just, pa just past lunch. No, I, 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 I don't believe we uh, have any afternoon uh, plans. Do, do you mind, my dear, if I take a moment to investigate? Not the I think yes. that would be marvellous. I am I'm quite desperate to spend more time with dear Elizabeth here. And you'll forgive well. us, Miss Wentworth, if I do not return your, uh, your fiancé all the, particularly soon. I find myself drawn into the study. Uh, often, and to be able to muse with another mind. Well, ha, huh, there's a fine thing. And uh, lead on, Miss Nordlake. Uh, she's going to turn and, uh, actually she will head down and into the library. Uh, and Reverend, you are... Yeah, I am at the moment. suspicious. I don't, I think at this point, I don't think that the Reverend is suspicious of, like, people are studying weird stuff. He's suspicious about, like, their end goal, but doesn't yeah. feel at all suspicious about, like, well, this is an opportunity to learn more. Perhaps our goals align. Perhaps they don't. But at a minimum, there's a better chance of potentially finding things out with with people who've also been looking into it. Don't have to beat around the bush. Um, you know. Uh, yeah. Take an opportunity to learn some stuff. 
Okay. Um, why not? Uh, Diana and Reverend. Terrible idea. But why not? <laughs> Diana and Reverend head. Uh, Diana and the Reverend head towards the library, uh, while Robert sort of clasps his hand and says, "Well, I have some work around the garden. I'm looking to return to. Uh, feel free to make your use of the estate. And apart from that, I'd. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you all. Likewise. Um, Did he's you? going to move to leave. Uh, you are in the awkward thing of kind of." Your invitation is over a little bit. You mm. can hang out, but you're like people, you know, it's like when you're at the party and you could like be doing a lot of, well, yeah. Yeah. best get started on the washing yep. up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Early morning. It's lunch. <laughs> Got to get so, like, to bed soon. In terms of, in terms of who, your invitation kind of extended. To stay. Yeah. And, yeah. and I assume, uh, by extension, Emma is, is also kind of to spend time with Elizabeth, got a reason yep. to stay. Yep. Miss um, uh, Elizabeth is more than happy to, to host all three of you. Uh, she is, is grateful for the company, but uh, there's no formal any schedule. Uh, what, would the, what would everyone like to do? I'm pr I'm personally, I'm pretty happy to leave. Would like to leave via the long corridor, if possible. Yeah. But I understand that might not be possible. Yeah, sure. Just to check on it. Okay. Um, How about uh, we take a turn about the house? Yes, 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 yes. What an idea. Um, uh, Miss Elizabeth will lead you and, and absolutely take you through the long corridor. And uh, she will remark on it. Uh, she's... Uh, Reverend's not here, so we're with your boy, the one that pick up on it. She's overcorrecting a little bit, and she's now upping George a little bit to <laughs> Miss Radcliffe. She's doing a oh. lot of like, you must oh, see no. the gardens where Mr. Potterton uh, helped me from We're that so rather great. nasty monster uh, the other night. And she'll take you through the long corridor. As you go through it, it seems in the, you know, it is in its shortened condition. Uh, you will also it's notice okay. uh, that the painting that was in the place where the thing was has been taken down. A bit of the rug has been pulled back around that area, and you can see a like um, more permanent marker. It's small, but a little like nickel uh, nail has been hammered into the area, and a number of uh, uh, more along increments where this can be more carefully studied. As uh, Elizabeth trails a hand along, and she will say, "This was Robert's idea uh, that we can get the we can keep an eye out, and should anything amiss begin to occur, should be able to detect it as quickly as possible." They're very enthusiastic about all of this, aren't they? Yes, 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 rather. But I mean, it, if anyone can learn about it, if anyone can try to understand it, I, I, well, I think it's a fine thing. I think it's a grand pursuit. It's, I'd rather forget it at times, but it happened. And it's, well, father's not coming back. I'd hate to lose another friend. Yes, it's, um, I suppose their enthusiasm is warranted in, in that regard. It certainly is an important thing to keep an eye on. Yes, but, um, well, why don't you see the garden at day, and then the next time you come with me, you can see it. At yes, how wonderful, and you can show us the path you normally take. <laughs> um, she walks you out, and we'll begin to talk gardens. Um, <laughs> Miss Radcliffe's in it, if the she gardens. Wishes. Um, I've seen gardens. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, but I'm fine. I'm, well, it's, it's nice here's the thing. It's nice to just be told what to do for a bit. Here's the thing. You could duck out. You could use well, your... Well, the only thing I'll say is, uh, Molly, you're casing the wrong estate. These oh, people yeah. have oh, money. Yeah. These people <laughs> have real money. And mm. while there, there are... there are, It is more defended than the Potterdons. There's like a decent amount of staff. Uh, you're like... Ka-ching, vase, ka-ching, painting, ka-ching, <laughs> huge piles of gold that are undoubtedly stored in that safe. Like, Just this would be where up. you'd break in. And it's of not course. impossible, impossible to do. They're definitely a little lighter on staff. Uh, the only other person that uh, lives here is uh, um, uh, the dowager lady, Emma Northlake, is still mm. here, although she is upstairs mm. resting. Um, what happened to Lydia? Uh, Coombs, Lydia, Coombs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Sorry. Mrs. Sarah Coombs is traveling Sarah Coombs. With, with Lydia, and they are looking to arrange a uh, matching for uh, Elizabeth, um, because kind of the 
they've taken a big twist now. We're kind of, they're not inheriting shit. Uh, so they need to start. They need to 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 re so They'll all be fine, but they need to kind of arrange something for Elizabeth for us to be an old man. It changes changes what they're looking for. Yeah, yeah, it does. Our lady, uh, Lady Emma was unable to travel. I was staying here. Um, from here they'll do a walk around the gardens. Is there anything? Uh, or do you want to do you want to dip out? Don't have anything to do until uh, tomorrow mm. at least. I, I, yeah. Well, checking I your time, the, the, the tavern has probably been open to, by this point. They're probably beginning the repair work. I mean, I, I, I forgot I, to go on. They just begin the repair work? And then yep. we follow up when it's done. Okay. Um, does the doctor need us for anything? Does Parson need us for anything? We, we, we're kind he's of got, done. He's we've, got, he's we've, got... we've made a bit of a scene at both visits we attended yeah. so far. So he's going to go check in on other people, he's... but yep. I can't imagine he's particularly delighted by the idea of you making a scene in another place. <laughs> okay. You can you can I might need a week to... to figure out what I'm gonna do next. The okay. only the only thing I think of is going to speak to the Dowager and trying to see if we can get the family Bible and find out where these people are from, basically. But that mm. kind of outside I don't I don't think I have the connections or skill set for that, so maybe I've mentioned it in passing to someone else as an idea. Uh, you but, could uh... you could ask that's not a great secret. Elizabeth is happy to tell it yeah. to you so it can just come up. Uh, they are descended down from uh, a uh, ancestor called Felix, who was, I refer to my own hand out here, uh, the younger brother, hang on a second. It is, it is, a, it is one of note that uh, Miss M, I think you did a bit of study of the, the family. I did, so yeah. You would recognize this. Not that name particularly, but I you certainly would tried. You would recognize the one is connected to. Hold on. Is it Alistair? Yeah. Uh, so he is the, the uh Yeah, so Alistair um had was was the firstborn who gave birth to William, who was the one sacrificed previous to what would have been Elizabeth and, and, and everyone else. Alice was one that sacrificed and then uh, uh, killed himself and kind of left the Im implication of like how possibly this could be solved. Uh, Felix was his uh, younger brother. So okay. Felix didn't inherit. He went off into the church and went abroad, but he would have been around, he would have been involved possibly in the events that happened. He would have been aware of Alistair's death and aware yeah. of, uh, William. you don't know he how- He was here for it. He didn't inherit the. Uh, Alistair then had another child, Robert, who actually inherited all the North Lake stuff. But Felix was the branch that went that way, um, and through them, okay. eventually, it came to Robert and Diana. I see. Okay. In which case, a tour around the gardens genuinely probably be nice to uh, uh, Emily. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, you have a look around there, and uh, meanwhile, Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Sorry, I get, yeah. I'm Elizabeth. very bad at mixing people up. That it's, it's it's literally the EM name. Yeah, yeah. well, it's an L. <laughs> yes, I, I I know, but it should be an EM name. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Um, no but worries. But we don't. There is no Emily's. There's Emma and there's Elizabeth. There's two Emmas. Yeah, but there, there could be. Is what Jim's saying. You think so? There could be. There could be. There might could be. be. Could, be an, could be an improvement even. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, elsewhere and in the library, uh, Reverend. Uh, Jennings and Diana Northlake are going through some poems. They have a reasonable connection of, of oddities that they've uh, gathered from all across Europe. Uh, and they bas she basically gives you open license to explore them. Uh, it's a little bit like, over the year you'd begun to get a bit of a foot in and a bit of an understanding on the occult. They're a good few miles further down that pass. And they've also had the privilege of wealth and no responsibilities to pursue that as their principal hobby. They've collected quite a lot on it and kind of thrown themselves into it. That said, they've had no tangible experiences with what you kind of know as the mythos. Um, so she will, uh, she speaks to you a bit as you're sitting down about what you saw and is pretty eager to hear your telling of it since she's only gotten it from a little so far. I yeah, just I wonder how I... open you are with it. I think I think in terms of of talking about the experience um 
I give some apology in that they are painful memories and are a little, like, are skewed due to the stressful nature, um, which is true. That That is not something I'm trying to, to hide or to... Um, so I think I share sort of some of the, the, the larger brush strokes and kind of intimate that there was something uh, that there was like part of the the process of interrupting the the reopening or to to, to close the way uh, and and mitigate danger um, we had to like I don't think I use the word ritual but essentially go like we did a thing it was quite intense and took quite a toll we were successful but perhaps not successful as successful as we could have been had we had the time and resources and knowledge to do it properly um i think i stay away from the like someone exploded and that was a lot it's more like this didn't go well you would already if, if elizabeth had talked about it i imagine like it i'm sort of going you probably already know that some people died or didn't come back so like i'm not really going to touch on that but i am going to imply that that's what I'm talking about. She a little bit it doesn't it's not fully disrespectful but she's definitely a little brazen with her questioning. She will say <laughs> it was Miss Miss Wentworth's sister that cast the spell. Her name <sighs> is Georgiana. Yes. What about it? Elizabeth <laughs> wasn't there. It was the last thing that happened to her father. I've deduced, or I believe, that there was some sacrifice involved. Elizabeth tells me a little bit about it, and we realize it's tied to the blood, our blood. Was this where Lord Northlake perished? You must understand these are difficult memories both to return to and also to bring to mind but uh, yes oh horrible yes but it's as you say to understand it now to be better armed for the future if this is in our blood this threat mm. i'd rather like to know about it understand it so that we can protect ourselves and Elizabeth. Yes. I think, um... I would prefer not to speak to the details of what happened to people that I consider acquaintances, if not friends, but, insofar as my power is to, to share what I remember of the circumstances under which this occurred, what, what we uncovered, I... I to protect one's family is a very noble cause, and I, I certainly would wish to help you with that. Like, um, you mentioned the, the, the movement, the, the hand of God in all of this. How do you find you have reconciled uh, God's movement within this with the uh, strangeness of what you've seen? Oh, there's God above everything. This is all his working. Carried forward, evolved upon, and transmuted into however we perceive it um you get the impression that's a bit hand wavy and it's possibly because oh, yeah. she knows she's speaking to a reverend she's like that's what you want to hear right i think i think i, I sort of... perhaps perhaps that is uh perhaps that's the the start and the end of it it's north like perhaps it really is god above everything but uh I am curious. I am I am curious about how tradition and sermon and speech it, we have um rituals, affectations, things that we do to to praise his name. 
And there are also rituals and affectations and, and things that are used, it seems, to praise the names of others, whether these are names shared by the same entity or not. I, I can't help but find myself curious. Yes, well, it's curiosity, isn't it? One way or another, we must sate it or else it keeps us up at night. You needn't tell yes, me yes. everything, Reverend Jennings, about your dark experiences, but consider me a friend in this, and should you wish to, when you're ready, I'd like to hear more. Anything we can do to, once again, understand the, uh, the threat in our blood. I think as we, if, if we are to, to study, if we come across anything, and I think something that I have experienced would shed light on, on what we're looking into, I will of course share um, the more details, but for the time being, the, the broad strokes, I think that's enough to at least give us a direction on further study, if yes. that uh, is agreeable to you, Mum. Yes, well, and directions, perfect point for it. I think that you've been so generous with your insight and your friends are well, welcoming. Uh, to us here, and uh, as I said, consider the library yours, but I wonder if I could uh, enlighten you into a, a something of a pet project my brother and I have been looking into recently, and see if you have any take on it, or any further information. But of course, I am at your disposal, Mom. Well then, uh, look at this. Uh, and she fetches down a tome, which is a historical book. Right? The hands up. And she begins to thumb through it. And she says, this place was, um, uh, there was a, a, a group of folks here, uh, but long before uh, it was settled and, and turned to, to Tarryford, uh, known as the Teleri, um, who, who lived in the area. And they were said to do some rituals, as you said, speak words of power, whether it was, well, wasn't our god, but uh, their own, uh, and try to encroach them into some strength. My brother and I believe that there's still evidence of this in the area, and, well, I hate to... I wonder if it's perhaps tied to that fault in this house, or perhaps to our own bloodline in some strange way, and it's what we're looking into, trying to understand further. What I'd like to do is share what we know, pass it to you, and ask that you do the same with us. If you find anything about this, if you find any insight into it, if you would return to us and, and let us know about it, that we might work on this together. The four of you are capable, I'm sure, and my brother and I have found much in our time. I rather think that together we could be truly formidable. I would be very happy to take a look at, at what it is that you found and... and give my assessment and, and pass anything else. I, I can say that the, the name Teleri is something I have uncovered myself in my own studies so far, though I know little more than they were a tribe of the area before uh, before the town sprung up. So I, I, it was a line of inquiry I was interested in finding more about regardless. And here you are, a great reverend. Yes, we were right to trust you, right to work with you. And uh, here, look at this, this passage here. Uh, and I'm going to... It's a rather long Ooh, one, yeah. but Love art, I know it's all within your power to read. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, thank you. Oh, my word. Uh, oh, my word, indeed. Oh, my oh, word, and it doesn't have... Uh, yeah, you're going to have to just zoom have... I think the font's pretty That's palatable our... on this one. Uh, our orders were to observe the Teleri, called the Dark Ones, by their neighbours, to ascertain the strength of their forces and defences. It had become apparent to our commander that to make allies of the other tribes, Rome would have to destroy this one, who the others hated as much as they feared. To do so would prove Rome's power and superiority over both the tribe and their strange deity. We came upon them in some sort of ritual, which was not unexpected, as we had heard of their dark rites. It was said that they could look into the emptiness within and take power from it. The whole tribe had gathered outside the central mound in their village, which we were told was some form of primitive temple. We did not witness what then happened with our own eyes, as we could not have gained entry without detection. Instead, we found out later from a captured tribesman what took place. According to our informant, the rite began with the tribe's elders drawing a particu particular symbol on a marker stone with the blood of a sacrifice. Four symbols, four stones one for each of the principal venti. 
Four of the elders then stood back to back around some font or pool that lies at the temple's heart, their faces turned to the four winds. Once in position, each of these elders drew the symbol they faced onto their forehead with yet more blood. As they stared sightlessly at the marker stones, they simultaneously took a draft a draught of some sort of black liquid drawn from the font before quickly linking arms. A moment later, the four gained a look of exultation and then fell into a deep slumber. Our captive assured us that, had they so wished, the elders could have taken an unbeliever with them as an offering had they too imbibed the liquid and joined arms with them. Outside the mound, Our only inkling that something had happened was the sight of four robed figures being carried reverently from the mound and back into their own dwellings. Even now, we cannot be sure if the elders' souls went to commune directly with their god or if they had performed some final act of oblation. It matters not. The Teleri are no more. Well, that is very informative. Mm -hmm. You You can see how we're we're interested in this. It seems that the... Well, the peoples that were here before had some rituals of their own, and while I may simply cast this as strange document, Romans, they came through here, there is evidence of it. Reverend, we paid a visit to Mr. Havering some days ago out of Stornley mm-hmm. House, and we found evidence of a symbol drawn into the stone behind which was the first of one of these perhaps locations out here a symbol drawn into the winds see this and uh she sketches quickly and simply the same symbol that you had seen uh and that mrs miss radcliffe has also spotted in the state we found this and we believe there to be others principal site of the ritual is unknown but there is power here and these people believed in it this is my brother and i's pet project and anything you can do to help us we'd be grateful for I shan't lie to you, uh, Miss Northgate. I, I have also seen that symbol at the Havering Estate. We caught it in the chapel. The place seems strange. It also seemed to have been hidden, which is curious. Yes, well, you'll understand. We took liberties with speaking with you, and there's a trust that we all share. Our eyes opened. This is not true of everyone, and while I admit, uh, my brother and I can be, well, it can be something like a dog with a bone. We're searching for these, and we hope we'll find the rest. Yes, indeed. It sounds like if we are... You are aware of the sleeping sickness that has taken hold of some members of the town? In passing, yes, although we've not met with any of them. Mr. Havering was still waking when... I understand he's now mm-hmm. slumbering. Yes, it does seem rather interesting. This this account that you found has bears some similarities to, well, in so much as it talks of a slumber and not waking, and we're fortunately, frustratingly, of course, it doesn't mention whether or not the elders in this particular ritual had any way of being reawoken. But and there's nothing more in the following passage. I've searched. Well, I... What occasion brought you to Havering? Um, um, it, you're not present at the moment, sorry, yeah, George. Sorry, but yeah, I'm not just as a reverend. Yeah, I, I think I would also be like, yeah, I'm interested in in what what it was that drew you to Havering and and this like where it is it is fortunate you found the symbol there. Did you know about it before making your way to Havering, or was it a, a lucky happenstance? My brother and I, on our visits, have searched a number of uh, regions in the area. Here is our suspicion. The venti, referred to in the passage, is of course the Roman winds or the gods that they held, and so we took this to mean cardinal direction. If we take Tarryford as the center of this rite, then merely we need to seek in each direction until we can find one of the stones. We were lucky with the Haverings, but the rest we have been unable. Havering was Stornley House, yes? Correct. Well, then... Uh, looking at the map of the area. (laughs) Uh, There are a couple of places that would make sense. Um, You know, there is one, uh, just off, off, based on that information, perhaps 
perhaps if you would allow me to share a little of this with my companion, uh, Mr. Potterton. His estate is rather due west of the town. I wonder whether we might have some luck uncovering a similar symbol in an older part of his estate. Yes, 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 please. Enlighten your companions and see if they can help. Listen, I have some studies to return to and some interest which I'd like to continue to study. Speak with your friends and consider us allies in this. Anything that you find and share with us, then please do so. We are, well, we keep odd hours. So you'll find us. Of course. Uh, and likewise, if you stumble across anything interesting or wish to look at uh, any of the, the records of the town that uh, are stored in my rather humble rectory, although I don't have quite as many as the good Reverend Choke, I, I do have a, a, a handful of um, records. If they would be of use to you, by all means, please stop by the rectory. I'd be happy to share. Certainly. I, I think we'll call upon you soon. Um, I look forward to it, Miss Orthanc. She's going to return to her study and consider this area open to her. She has a reasonably sizable collection of both historical and occult tomes uh, that you can look through uh, to gain some bonuses on research in those areas. You need only ask. Uh, we'll wrap the, scenario, the, the session here, but as the four of you meet outside, uh, it is coming into evening now, uh, and nightfall will follow not too long after. Um, some information shared, which I'll, I'll pass across the four of you to basically resolve, and then we'll set the scene for the next session. Did we I get a I... chance to go through the garden with Elizabeth? Yes, 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 you did. Was there anything particularly that you were... We kind of, I just kind of wanted to know what route they take when they do these night walks and where it takes yeah. them in the garden. Um, a path through here, it goes a number of directions. It will head towards the, the, um, more or whatever the word for it was a, a couple of times it genuine you get the, the impression mausoleum. they are doing so to comfort and speak with elizabeth okay. there's not a particular yeah. like area they seem to be searching for um and yeah, as okay. robert comes out you like whether that for whatever suspicion he does appear to just be doing a bit of gardening like he's just kind of <laughs> having a go with the roses occult gardening uh possibly Ooh. I don't know what a cold gardening looks I'm not like. Sure. I'm I don't not know sure if I recognize if I saw it. But it's it, real spooky. It, so it seems to be a lot like topiary. He's kind of trimming some of the hedges. Like, ah, that one's going to go away from to it. life, I'm going to be so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, w I would like to share that I think we have a at least tentative allyship with mm -hmm. the North Lakes. Um, I will... I'll share again in, in like broad strokes. It appears that they have found some reference to a older tribe called the Tilliri. Um, it is a name I have I have also come across, but they were able to share far more information. Mm. Um, they are uh, aware that there was um, a ritual that involved the drawing of symbols at Cardinal's directions, and I'm sure it comes as no surprise those symbols be appear to be similar to the ones, if not identical, to the one we found at. Um, uh, the, the Havering estate. Um, as it appears to be related to Cardinal Directions, Mr. Potterton, your estate is rather due west of the town, and I'm wondering if you've ever come across anything like this, or if there's any areas of your estate that are perhaps older and uh, less frequented that we could have a bit of a look in and, and see if we can find something similar. The I other... Thought... Ooh, sorry, I start to think back, but I'm I'm pretty sure that I won't have known anything. I do know, of course, that Miss Radcliffe does know um, of a place. But uh, yeah. Spotted, you you think back. You're pretty confident it's not in the house. You remember you you know you have a summer house which is quite old and kind of in disrepair. Generally, you're a little bit that would probably be where you'd think to look. Can I get you to make a? I think it's going to be an intelligence roll. Sure. Uh, rolling now success hey. you now it, it's only as it comes back you you think of the, the summer house and you now just remember that as kids you remember playing around there and you actually think that it, there's kind of a little like oh maybe there was something like maybe you have seen this actually mm -hmm. it was it was kind of niggling in the back of your head for a while now where you might have seen this before and yes you think you might have seen it out in the summer Dang house it. but it would have been a heavy thing and you would have been completely unable to, to 
a bit. You and and you kind of like and in Idle Fancy you just dismiss, and it was very like faint and stuff. Even then, it was. I I I almost disbelievingly communicate the theory, but look, if we're looking things that you know, we know that whatever was in the North Lake's past was old. It stands yes. to reason that it could be other. Yeah, well, we should check that part of my property at once. In terms of where else, I would. Do, do I have access to like me as a as a player and me as a character? Do I have access to the same map and same information? Yep. In That's that case, correct. I would also recommend that we go up to the Sand Lake Farm and see if we can find anything in an older area of that. And the North Lake Estate is not due south. No. The Pendleton Woods are. And yeah, Pen Pendlehaven Woods yeah. are due south. Perhaps... All the more reason to go... I think I'm out. going to... I might not I might not mention the woods, or if I do, it'll be like, mm, interesting. It might be... I might throw myself into looking at records to see if there's any notes of any kind of buildings, structures. anything, any structures, anything in the woods itself that could potentially hold such a, an item. Mm -hmm. um, because... So, so you're not mentioning the woods to me, notably, because... I'm mentioning are... that, like, I, the, there are three buildings that I can think of, one being your estate, one being this farm, but if we're talking about cardinal directions, well, the thing that is south directly from the town is the woods. Mm. I do not know of any buildings yeah. or structures, but it isn't a line of investigation we could take to, to try and see if we can find records of it. If we think there's a camp set up in the woods somewhere, which stands to reason there is, I think it's likely that they would have set up around any kind of existing infrastructure. That seems sensible, particularly if it's a long-term camp. I had a fairly concrete guess that whatever if we go and we try and find the brigands they'll be set up around whatever symbol and i think perhaps that's a maybe the last place we tackle it and that's uh i'm sure, sure that the... we must get the constable involved before we attempt that uh, yes uh, let, let us start at least with the perhaps the most easiest of access mr Potterton, if you'd be willing to allow us to certainly look around your estate perhaps I... uh I also think that we should do what we can to ensure that at least one of these, so so that all of them can't be collected together ultimately, we should try and limit people's access to this. I, I had misgivings about the enthusiasm of our new friends. I don't think that... Oh, good. It's not just you. Uh, I, I thought their, uh, their interest, while commendable, uh, just, just slightly too much on the side of enthusiasm over fear. I think... It is reasonable that two people who have learnt about a rather unpleasant history of their particular family would be interested in finding out more and potentially preventing such a thing from happening again. However, I agree, caution needs to be taken. For the time being, I intend to share what we learn with the North Lakes in the hope that they are willing to share what they know in return. The the text they passed bears striking resemblance to this sleeping sickness, and if we can together find out more about what's causing it, perhaps we can find a cure, or at least some way to prevent it from happening again. I would hope the North Lakes, the newest North Lakes, were not interested in trying to recreate such a ritual given its uh, impact. But if, if such a thing should be the case, then I suppose we must stay aware to the possibility. I will also stay aware to the possibility, but for the time being I see no risk in working with them and pooling our knowledge. As long as we keep at least one of them closely in our hands, I think we should be fine. I didn't get any sense of maliciousness. Simply, perhaps, selfishness. You know, often the the, the two things blur into one, but I take your point. Yes, we, I think we are in agreement. If we can find anything that helps us... helps me understand what it was that happened last year, I, I would, um... I would very much like to... put a pin to the whole affair. Hmm. 
put a capstone, as it were. Uh -huh. oh, very reasonable. Uh -huh. I'm, uh, J Jane is quite ready for a bit of a lie down. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's, because I'm going to be late, away. Gonna, gonna sleep. That's right. I'm be away next weekend. Very but sure I do have to... some ideas. Being on the timing, I might let you know, Dave. What, uh, yeah, that sounds perfect. What, uh, Jane might be planning. You also do genuinely probably need to like take some rest. I so we can Jane park need you to lie down. At, at the Potterton estate and then possibly give you an opening to do something a little bit suspicious. Uh, fantastic. All right. Well, uh, we will we will park the, the session there uh, to resume next week. Uh, it will be short one, Jackson, but uh, Jane can get up to uh, whatever she so wishes. Hi, Jinx. No good. Uh, yeah, is the answer. yeah, most likely. Um, but uh, the rest of us will be here, so we hope we will catch you then. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you, everyone, for playing, and we'll see you in a week. Thank Back you for keeping, Dave.